Welcome to week four of our Football Fridays in Georgia here on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Tonight, we're at Creekside High School where the defending 5A state champion Seminoles will take on the two and one and third ranked Jaguars of Stevenson in a game matching up two terrific rivals. Hi again, everybody. I am Mark Harmon. Welcome to some great high school football action. We are just moments away from kickoff, but first up, let's send it over to our social media correspondent, Grace Olson. Grace? Thank you, Mark. It's another night of high school football at its finest on GPB, and we've got you covered on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We're going to be having coverage rolling all night long, and we've been doing that all week long, actually. We're at Creekside Seminoles uh, Pep Rally this afternoon, and man, was that an exciting experience. I'm going to give you a taste of that video right here. The, beer, the, cheer, the cheerleaders were involved, the students, the fans, the football players. It was so exciting. I haven't been in an atmosphere like that since I think I was in high school, and we've got full coverage coverage of that for you online at gpb.org slash sports, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and we're going to continue having coverage for you on the bands all night long because the Stevenson Jaguars and the Creekside Seminoles, they've got a battle of the bands going here on here tonight. It's not just about the football team. I've got the drum major right here with me. What's the most special part of being here, being part of this experience as a member of the band? Oh, yes, ma'am. Being here is just being like part of a family, you know. Everybody's here for each other, and at the end of the day, you know, we can make music, we can play notes, but if we're not a family, we can't get anything done together. And no matter how big the band is, like, big or small, it doesn't matter. It's just as long as we have fun, we did what we needed to do, we came, we tried our best, give our 110%, and that's, that's what really matters to me. Well, that sounds like an amazing experience. I know all these guys are so proud to be a part of it. And like I said, we're going to have coverage on the bands rolling all night long on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And you can only see that if you uh, like us on Facebook. So make sure to check those videos out. And also download the GPB football app where you'll find region standings, uh, schedules, scores, everything you can need uh, your, for your football season. It's the perfect sidekick. Back over to you, Mark. Grace, thanks so much. We've got two great bands. We've got two great teams. We've got two talented coaches. It's going to be an exciting night here at Creekside High School. And now let's send it over to John Nelson, who has a very special presentation. Indeed they do, Mark. Thank you very much. You're with Rachel Freeman, the marketing director for the Mid-South for Cigna and Principal Maxwell from Creekside. It is that time of the show. So once again, let's send it over here to Rachel. Thanks, John. It's a great night to be here tonight with Creekside. And I'm especially de delighted to present Mr. Maxwell a check for $1,000. Thank you so much. Principal Maxwell, thanks for being a great host for all of us tonight. I'd just like to say thank you to Cigna for giving Creekside a donation, and we really appreciate it. All right, that is it for this particular part of the program, Mark, the special donation that we see every single week thanks to our friends at Cigna. Let's send it back over to you. All right, thank you, John. Are you ready for some football? We are getting ready. It is the Jaguars of Stevenson. It is the Seminoles of Creekside. It is time for Football Fridays in Georgia, live on GPB. Fifty-seven years ago tonight, the U.S. Department of Defense conducted the world's first fully contained underground nuclear explosion. It took place in or near Flats, Nevada, about 100 miles north of Las Vegas, and about 900 feet below ground in a specially constructed tunnel. Even though it was so deeply buried, the 1.7 kiloton blast was big enough to send a plume of dust high into the air and jostle shockwave detectors 2,300 miles away in Alaska. In other words, it blew it up real good. Bang, 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 bang. Tonight's pyrotechnic display will be totally above ground. The Stevenson Jaguars hail from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Like the granite dome that looms above their town, Ron Gartrell is the rock of this team. He's been calling plays for the Jags since the school opened in 1996, okay. the only coach they've ever known. He's gotten his team to the playoffs for the past 14 seasons in a row. But it's going to be hard for anyone to mess with the Creekside Mojo here at Arrowhead Stadium.
cheers of gridiron victory tempered by the bittersweet tears of personal loss. In high school football, emotions run high. And even if we played this game 900 feet underground, bet you you'd still be able to hear it. We're already a third of the way into the regular season, and we're live tonight in Fairburn for Football Fridays in Georgia. Welcome to Arrowhead Stadium in Fairburn. It's another football Friday in Georgia on GPB. As tonight, the third-ranked Stevenson Jaguars take on the fifth-ranked and defending state champion, Creekside Seminoles. And good evening, I'm Matt Stewart, joined by Larry Smith. And Larry, if this was soccer, they would call this a friendly. Both these teams, Region 6, 5A rivals, but they play in separate divisions. Regardless of that situation, game doesn't count in the division standings. This is a great matchup of talent-rich programs in the state of Georgia. Yeah, it is. Stevenson uh, produces so many uh, players that go on to the college level, to the NFL as well. One of the great programs in the state, if not the Southeast. And this Creekside team we saw a year ago win it all. Good young coach at Olton Downs. An upcoming program he's lost only once in 19 games here at Creekside. Stevenson's kind of gotten back to the basics. They've scrapped the spread offense. They're now 80-20 run to pass and rely on a stingy defense allowing just 11 points and less than 150 yards per game and led by their top junior corner, Khalil Ladler, and defensive end Chauncey Rivers. Yeah, they're both star players. Ladler, only a junior, one of the top players in the state. Georgia, Georgia Tech, all the ACC and SEC schools really want him. He'll be exciting to watch tonight. And then Chauncey Rivers, Georgia's already uh, lined him up uh, for next year, locked him up for next year. Defensive end, he's a star player as well. And again, as you mentioned, one of the real keys to this Jaguar defense. Well, watching Chauncey Rivers go up against that Creekside offensive uh -huh. line tonight, is going to be a real pleasure. They've got two SEC commitments on that Seminoles offensive line led by Auburn commit Markel Harrell and also Tennessee commit Vinzel Bulwar. Yeah, both those guys were two of the star players on that massive offensive line that we saw open huge holes last year as Creekside finished off that undefeated state championship and that big win over Tucker at the Dome last December. These two guys were really both very special players, and they really control what happens along that line for Creekside. And that's a Creekside offense that, uh, you know, Average over 40 points per game a year ago. One of the players, of course, that they're missing now is Jason Stanley, the Georgia wide receiver commit who unfortunately tore his ACL in the opener. But we'll talk more about Jason Stanley as the night goes on. Let's go to our third member now and John Nelson. Thank, thank you very much, Matt and Larry, and thank you for accessing us however you are doing so this evening as you talk about these two teams. Matt, you described it as a friendly, and that is accurate. But the way that the subregions are working out, Creekside is the new Tucker. When you have Region 4 and Region 6, think about how things were last year. Now Creekside, in effect, has been traded for Tucker when it comes to this new region and how things are breaking out in this mix of DeKalb County and Fulton County schools. Alton Downs has a new set of challenges for him. For Stevenson, doesn't matter. The win or the loss tonight could set up the de facto one versus two, and these two teams led by Ron Gartrell, the Jaguars, could play each other in effect in game 10 in the play-in game to determine seeding for the postseason. Or it could determine whether or not you're playing on the road when it comes to that play-in game if you're a two or a three in your sub-region. So we're already breaking out the abacus. We're already breaking out the slide rule. Region play is starting. Sub-region play is starting. We'll have scores and a whole lot of stuff for you this evening. So as we're prone to say, Matt and Larry, let's light this candle here from Creekside. All right, let's do that, John. Thank you very much. Ron Gartrell in his 19th season as the Jaguars head coach been the head coach since the program started in 1996, a record of 155 and 57. 27 years as a head coach in the Atlanta area with 189 victories, including his eight seasons at the old Shamrock High School. And Olton Downs, just 30 years old, played his college ball at Tennessee State. Looks like he could still suit up and play right now in his second season as the head coach here with a record of 18 and one. And we are underway with the kickoff coming to Isaiah Zuber at the five yard line. And Zuber is gonna have a hard time getting to the 10, finally lunges forward to the 12. And that's where the Stevenson Jaguars will start on offense. 
Kickoff brought to you by GoBuildGeorgia.com. Learn a skill, build a career, do it now. DeJuan Ford, the quarterback for the Stevenson Jaguars. A 6'3", 180-pound senior not called on to pass the ball very much. In fact, they run the ball, as I said just a few moments ago, 80% of the time. Got away from the spread offense back to the wing tee when they had so much success in the past. Guys like Raymond Sanders and South Carolina star running back Mike Davis. That's DeJuan Ford. And the ball is handed off to Cortez Logan. Cortez Logan picks up about three yards on the play. As we take a look at the Jaguars on offense, it's brought to you by TCSG, Sanders, Brown, Barnes, who's a college uh, prospect, Smith and Johnson. That's brought to you by Regions Bank. And in the wide receiver core, Zuber and Neal, the running backs, Logan, Patterson, and Tillman as they run the wing tee. Big hole right there, good tackle by number 17 right there for on, on defense. It's Trey Philpotts, the senior, closed that gap that opened up in the third down now for Stevenson. Philpotts, their leading tackler on the defensive line with 37 stops in the first four games and eight quarterback sacks. Probably would not get a chance at eight quarterback sacks tonight. They won't throw the ball eight times. <laughs> That's right. Third down and four. Big hole and a first down and more for Patterson. Ivante Patterson with the first down carry up across the 40 yard line. Yeah, Austin Shotwell right there on the tackle, but watch this big hole right here. As you, as you talked in the pregame, they're gonna run about 80% of the time. That's the, the offense that they run here at Stevenson. One more look, a huge gap. There's Shotwell right there to save what was a touchdown. If he doesn't trip him up, he's probably off to the races and six points for Stevenson. Avante Patterson just one carry last year as a blocking back in the spread offense, but having rushed for 230 yards in their first three games. Another run right up the middle to the 41-yard line. Let's take a look at the Regions Bank starting lineup as that was Tillman on the carry. This is Creekside on defense. Gates, Berkeley, Johnson, and Phil Potts. Moon, the middle linebacker, is their leading tackler, led by Freeman and Duncan on his sides. And in the secondary, Stanley, Grimsley, Catledge, and Shotwell. Shotwell only 5'5", five, five, a 5'5 five, five corner. Let's watch and see if Stevenson tries to take advantage of that at some point. Ford back to pass and throws. And it is incomplete. All right, it's complete across the 50-yard line to Dexter D.J. Neal, their top wide receiver who's committed to the University of South Carolina. Yeah, you look at this again, Matt, and again, when you sell the run every single time, look at the center there, reach out and uh, try to get a little bit of a block. Uh, just enough time there to, in space to allow him to get that pass off, and they've moved up to a first down and Dex into Creekside territory. Dexter Neal, a 6'4", 210-pound senior. He's been committed to South Carolina since before his junior season, since May of last year. First and 10 for Stevenson from the 47-yard line. Right up the middle again, Patterson gaping hole, and Patterson with the first down carry as he picks up 12 on the play. Well, right now you see the Stevenson line that again last year had it, last week I should say, had to keep some of these guys out because of injuries, but the you know, coach said they're gonna be healthy coming to this one. Look at the big hole right there that's opened up. I mean, he had all, a couple of choices there where he could pick and pop and decide where he wanted to go. Huge hole, and right now, this uh, offensive line for Stevenson is really controlling this game. That was a big hole opened up by the center, number 68, Javon Barnes, a 6'3", 300-pound senior who's a three-star defensive tackle prospect. Again, right up the middle, Stevenson really getting a lot of yards right in the interior of that defensive line. And Devontae Deep Patterson with the carry again. Yeah, defensive line right there in the middle. You've got Johnson's at 5'10", 205, um, a little bit smaller, and they're kind of picking on him right now. Number 63 on defense, as, as you said, Stevenson's got some real beef up there in the front, and it's paying off right now. See, he's just a little bit, <laughs> he almost hides behind those guys. He's uh, just a little bit shorter. Got to give him some help in there. Ball at the 29-yard line. Avante Patterson again. Patterson close to a first down. I believe he has it inside the 25-yard line. So a steady dose by Avante Patterson, the 5'10", make that 5'9", 210-pound senior bowling ball for the Stevenson Jaguars. Hey, you look at number 55 on offense along the line there, that Cameron Smith. And look at the sides of him next to number 63. 
uh, for Creekside, Alex Johnson. We saw a shot up there a moment ago uh, from that end zone camera. That's, <laughs> he, he just stands up and just takes him out of the play every time. He's got 95 pounds on Johnson. Patterson again, sidestep inside the 15, stumbles inside the 10, and a first and goal to go coming up for Stevenson as they have marched right down the field. Fifth carry, Larry, for Ivante Patterson on this drive. As you said, only one all of last year. It just shows you right now what uh, what he's been able to do for him. But again, when you've got this kind of line, and look at that, you've got to make that tackle right there. Uh, if you're Robert Catledge, the sophomore, um, you've got to make sure you get in good position, not just the arm tackles, but right now this Creekside defense is in pursuit. They've got to make a stop here. Or they're going to go down uh, early on 6-0. Patterson to the sideline to take a rest, and a timeout has been called by Stevenson as they have marched from there. 12-yard line all the way down to the Creekside 8. So an impressive drive, and really what has been most impressive, Larry, is the way they have just attacked, attacked the interior of that Creekside defensive front. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. You look at it, and, and both these teams battling some injuries right now. And that's also part of football. How do you uh, adjust when you've got some players out? And as Coach mentioned, again, this offensive line banged up. Tight, tight loss earlier this season to Miami Central. Uh, but Coach said, hey, you know what? When we get our guys together and healthy, good things can happen. And right now, they're really in sync uh, from the offensive line. It all starts right there. Patterson is the beneficiary. Take nothing away from him. But this offensive line in this first series, they look as impressive as we've seen early on here in this high school season. Lacker of a bona fide kicker really cost them in that loss against Miami Central. That's their only loss, 2-1, and one, coming off a 47-6 win over Banneker last Friday night. So first and goal to go now for Stevenson at the 8-yard line. This is the ninth play of the drive. Seven of them have been run plays, just one pass. Logan, no, Patterson. Patterson scores the touchdown easily. Impressive. 88-yard drive by Stevenson to start the game as they march right down the field running on eight of nine plays. Patterson scores the touchdown as seventh of the season. You got to look at this uh, TCSG replay right here. And Patterson, again, he gets the good hole right there, uh, just runs right over one guy, bowls his way into the end zone. Hey, listen, the formula has been set in this very first drive here, very, very early in the game. And I think that Stevenson, if you're a part of the coaching staff of the team, you got to like your game plan so far. They took it right down the field. And man, as you mentioned, no kicker, no true kicker on this team, so they'll go for two every time. Play gets blown dead as they hand the ball off to Logan. Talk to Ron Gartrell. This will be offsides against Creekside. This will make it an even easier two-point conversion attempt as they'll be half the distance to the goal. Talked to Ron Gartrell before the game, and he said, I asked him if they were going to kick or go for two tonight, and he said, I don't know. It's just a gut feeling. And I think the way they've been running the ball sure. on that nine-play, 88-yard drive, his gut feeling says, you know what, we can win that battle inside. We'll go for two. Well, I think every play went for more than two yards. Uh, and they, they had a lot of success there on the, on the ground. Uh, why go away from that? So Stevenson once again lines up going for two as they're even closer to the goal line here. And Patterson gets in. Ivante Patterson with the two-point conversion after he'd scored on an eight-yard touchdown run just moments earlier. A nine-play, 88-yard drive that took less than four minutes. Jaguars grind out an early 8-0 lead. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is made possible in part by Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, lighting the way. Technical College System of Georgia, learn more, earn more. Cigna, go you. And viewers like you, thank you. Nothing prepares you better for a great career than the Technical College System of Georgia. TCSG colleges produce graduates with the knowledge and training today's top employers are looking for. With campuses across Georgia, state-of-the-art facilities, and outstanding instructors with real-world experience, it's the kind of affordable college education that will fast-track you into a rewarding career. We're building a better future for you. Contact the TCSG College in your area today or go to tcsg.edu. 
Back at Arrowhead Stadium here in Fairburn, Georgia, Stevenson on their opening drive, marching 88 yards to take an 8-0 lead on the Tide Seminoles, Larry. Yeah, Stevenson watch this once again, and he just really goes right there over the left side. Great blocking uh, by everyone there to go in for this. I'm really impressed with this offensive line and the way they've started this game right now. Now it's Creekside's turn. They've been known to score a few points too, Matt. Yeah, Creekside's had a bad habit this season of uh, falling behind. This marks the uh, fourth time in their first five games that they have trailed in the first quarter. They trailed 17-7 in their 55-41 win against South Cobb, trailed 17-7 in the first quarter. Fell behind 21-0 to Langston Hughes. Came back to make a game of it before losing 21-20. They were down 19-7 in the third quarter to Carver Columbus and came back and won that one 29-27 in the fourth quarter. And here they are, down seven, or make that eight nothing to the Stevenson Jaguars. So Creekside falls on the opening kick, Dewan Duncan, so the Seminoles will start at the 29-yard line. Yeah, the Creekside defense right there, a uh, lot to talk about right now. You see Coach Downs uh, very involved in right now, trying to get his guys to uh, figure out a different kind of uh, a, a plan to stop that running attack when they get back onto the field. Junior Felix Harper, 5'11", 170, the starting quarterback for the Seminoles. He's completed 74% of his passes for 185 and a half yards per game. So Stevenson will face an attack that will run the ball and throw the ball. First carry of the ball game is Bryson Terry as we take a look at the Regions Bank starting lineups for the Seminoles. Harrell and Bulwar, the uh, bookends with Ford, Nicholson, and Dowdle in the middle. Wide receivers are Clark and Perkinson with Terry and Gibbs in the backfield and Freeman is the tight end. And there's big Markel Harrell, 6'3", 300 pounds, senior. 24-7 sports composite, three-star recruit and the number 24 ranked offensive guard in the country. Julian Gibbs on the carry and Gibbs gets to about the 42 yard line as we take a look at the region's bank starting lineup for the Jaguars on defense. Harris, Sterling, and Johnson, and Chauncey Rivers, the Georgia Bulldogs commit up front. Grant Scales and Makins are the linebackers. Bowles, Freeman, Mordek, and Ladler in the secondary. Ladler, the 24-7 sports composite four-star and number nine ranked junior corner in the entire nation. Gibbs on the carry right up the middle. Tackled by Makins. We, we saw that opening drive there by Stevenson and the gaping holes that line opened up. We're seeing the same thing right now on Creekside. We saw this all last year, earlier this year as well. Knox, one of the top running backs you'll see. I'm sorry, make that uh, uh, Terry. Uh, Knox was his partner in crime last year, moved on to Purdue uh, after graduation, and he's up in West Lafayette right now. But again, as you mentioned, a bit more of a multifaceted offense right now for Creekside. Second down and seven. Harper running and close to the first down yardage marker as he scrambles across the 50 and down to the 45 yard line. Well, that's a dimension that he's going to bring. Uh, you look at Felix Harper here, a junior, but again, one of state titles, a sophomore quarterback for this Creekside team. Doesn't like what he sees there, sees a wide open space. He's shifting enough there to avoid the tackle, get the extra yards, and uh, very close to a first down right now. He's pretty accurate, too. Left hander, doesn't throw a lot. Uh, not very big, about a buck 70 soaking wet. Uh, but again, he's the star, the, the stir to this streak here for Creekside. They're going to call for a measurement as they spot the ball at the 46-yard line. This is a Creekside offense, averaging 36.3 points per game, 298 yards per game on the ground, and 185 and a half in the air. You so need. a much more balanced offensive attack than what Stevenson offers. But Stevenson, when you run the ball the way they did on that opening drive, you don't have to really throw the ball that much. No, no, you don't. And I, I think that's what they're thinking right now on the other side is uh, they're equal to measurement. And, there's coach uh, watching this again first down. I thought he picked it up. It's a good uh, call to take that measurement first down for Creekside. You look over here on the other side now for uh, for the Seminoles and their defense and coach uh, Olden Downs has yet to see an offensive play. He's been in that huddle that we showed a moment ago. He still is in that huddle with his entire defensive unit and defensive coaches all around him. Um, he did not like what he saw at all where again they couldn't stop anything 
that the Jaguars were doing, and we'll see what they come out with here uh, at once they get back on the field. Bolton Downs, a safety at Tennessee State, starred at Shaw High School in Columbus, and also was an assistant coach there before getting his first head coaching job at Riverdale for a couple of seasons before taking over here at Creekside last season. A couple of yards on the play. Bryson Terry, here's Olton Downs. He's finally <laughs> broken out of that huddle after giving his defense a good what for after that opening drive. Yeah, he, he missed uh, one about six plays there, I think. Um, by the way, I wanted to say also some good swarming defense there. I like what the Jaguars are doing right now, trying to contain that run game at Creekside. Second down, ball at the 44. And that's complete. Miles Clark to the 39-yard line. Clark picks up about five on the play. Khalil Ladler making that tackle for the Jaguars. That was a nice job there by Ladler to hold him and contain to a short gain. 16th catch of the year for Miles Clark. Of course, the Seminoles missing Jason Stanley, the four-star, 24-7 sports composite, number 26 ranked wide receiver in the nation. Tore his ACL in the first quarter of the very first game of his senior season. Third down. Bryson Terry, first down. As Terry gets to the 39-yard line. Darian Freeman. The safety making the tackle. There is Jason Stanley on the sideline. A year ago, 41 catches for 817 yards and 16 touchdowns. He had three catches in the first quarter of his first game before he tore his ACL. That's tough, too. He's a senior. That's got to be tough for that young man to sit out. We expect to be a big year. Bryce and Terry met right there in the middle. Terry is still able to lean his body forward and get a couple of yards after being met by the Mike linebacker, Abram Scales. Yeah, Scales was there. Uh, also, uh, Christian Johnson was there. Uh, you know, I really like, what again, what they're doing. So second down and seven with the ball at the 31. So Creekside has responded to Stevenson's drive with putting together a pretty good one of their own. Terry misdirection, and then he got snagged right there in the backfield. Christian, Big tackle by Christian Johnson. Yeah, Christian Johnson, number 43, the defensive tackle. Watch him here as he shakes off this block. Number 43 in the whites, so what you're looking for. Coming to your right side of your screen, he's right there. That was a 55 trying to, to, to hold him back, but uh, but he couldn't. Number 55 there. Markel, uh, or rather, uh, Bulwar. Yeah. Bulwar. There's Christian Johnson. 6'2", 235 pounds senior. Finally healthy after an injury in their Tucker uh, preseason game. Harper back to pass, throws in the middle, off the hands of Julian Gibbs, and then a big stick in the middle by Darian Freeman, the strong safety. And it's going to be fourth down. That's, that's a tough play, that rollout, but when you're a lefty, you're going away from your body. So he had to stop and reset himself. That gave the defense a chance to recover. Good, uh, hard, legal hit right there on the receiver. Make sure the play was broken up. Would have been a tough catch if he could have made it anyway. So on fourth down and eight, they're going to be going for it. This is out of the field goal range of their kicker, Chico Francisco Alejandro. Love his shoes if he ever gets out here. Harper, pump fake. Going for the home run and looking for Gibbs. And it is caught for the touchdown. Julian Gibbs got behind the defense. Darian Freeman, the safety, supposed to get over there and help out, let him get behind him and didn't make the play. And it's a touchdown for the Creekside Seminole. Well, that was really impressive. And give that the credit on that all to Felix Harper. You've got a lot of great, uh, great blocking up front, but Harper, the presence on fourth down, not to get excited, didn't see anything, stayed in the pocket, good blocking, found his uh, running back streaking downfield and threw it up and over the two defensive backs. As we look here in a moment, and Creekside's on the board for the first time tonight. Alejandre on for the PAT. He puts it through. And Creekside pulls to within one of Stevenson on this touchdown pass, the TDs, the TCSG 
Replay. Yeah, look at their good patience right here. Steps away from the defender and just up and over. Perfect throw. It can't be intercepted. It's either a touchdown or you turn the ball over on downs. Harper, again, the junior, but we talked to Coach. He's a little bit bigger than last year, a little more mature. Uh, but again, nice uh, spiral right there behind the defense in the hands of Gibbs who held on. That was just a fantastic play. Harper, again, we've mentioned before, doesn't mind running the ball. Good decisions. Had he thrown it out there, there's a defender out there in the flat on that receiver. Wouldn't have gotten much anyway. Instead, he winds up with six. A 32-yard touchdown pass to Julian Gibbs, his fourth touchdown of the season. And on fourth down and eight, they strike for pay dirt. And Felix Harper, his fifth touchdown pass of the season. I'm not sure if uh, Gibbs was uh, hurt uh, on the play itself or even on, he was on the field during the extra point. I'm not quite sure as we kick off now. Alejandro kicks to the near side. Zuber takes it at the 17 yard line. Isaiah Zuber run out of bounds just beyond the 25 as we check in with Grace Olson. All right, guys, there's a lot going on here tonight at this football game, a lot more than just football. There is the cure for childhood cancer. There's raising awareness uh, to create funds and everything to uh, support that cause. You'll see the players wearing gold socks. You see these uh, T-shirts, Go Gold for Cure, and also people wearing Go Gold for Cure eye black. So we, you'll see people in the stands wearing the gold, and it's all to support uh, the childhood uh, cancer awareness. And you can go to G the uh, Creekside website, also to support and to uh, donate your funds. Back up to you guys in the booth. Thanks for that info. Appreciate that. First and 10, ball is at the 27-yard line. Got the makings of a slugfest here, Larry, as the, both teams put together impressive drives on their opening possession. Stevenson going 88, Creekside going 71 as they open their second possession with a carry by Cortez Logan. I tell you what, that that's the first time they're right there. In fact, there's the gold, gold that Grace is talking about. Uh, that man is the, the father of a sophomore here who is battling uh, cancer himself. Talked to him earlier before the game, just a brave uh, family. And this man said, you know what, my son, he's the real hero for the battle that he is waging right now. In fact, the young man, we understand, is about to get ready to go back into school and back into the classroom. And we certainly uh, pray for him and, uh, and his recovery and his family as well. Absolutely, second down and seven. Oh, big hit on Ivante Patterson. He had nowhere to go. And he got stuck right there in the middle by Sedante Fuller. Yeah, one more look at this. Watch Fuller just uh, burst through right here. Linebacker position. I was just going to say before uh, uh, that, uh, after that first down play, I want to make sure we got on that, uh, that goal for gold um, uh, comment, though. First two plays of this uh, series for the Creekside defense, a far cry from anything we saw on the first drive. So that lengthy chewing out that they got from Coach Olton Downs, I think they got the message because it's been a different uh, defense these first two plays. Message delivered and received apparently. <laughs> Third down and long now for Stevenson. Ford given time. Deep, he's got Neal. Neal can't run under it. Just a little bit beyond the outreach of his extended hands. Austin Shotwell, the corner, running step for step with him, and it's going to be fourth down. Well, that was a great play. Boy, he waited. It was a, it looked like he had a time just right. One more look at it here, as you can see. He's got the arm, lofts it up, but just a bit long. I like the play call, though. And as much as you run, that's going to be open for you. Both teams taking it deep on their possessions here in the first quarter. Creekside went 32 yards for their touchdown, and Stevenson just missed a big gainer here on their second possession. Joshua Moon took one back last week in the 41-0 win against Druid Hills, and he's standing deep for Creekside at his 42-yard line. DJ Neal, who just ran down the field, kicks a line drive kick to Moon. <laughs> Moon, watch him go. And Joshua Moon tackled by DJ Neal, who's got to be winded, stayed back after kicking that thing. He had just run deep on the previous pass play. 
and he saves the touchdown right there. Yeah, that was impressive. Joshua Moon doing his best uh, Devin Hester impression. Uh, one line to go in the Georgia Dome, setting that NFL record. Watch this. I, I think the, the trajectory of that punt kind of fooled him a little bit. He kind of came right at him instead of up in the air. Reco nice recovery here. But again, the great tackle right here by Neal to save that touchdown, as you mentioned. Uh, what a great return there. And all of a sudden, Creekside's in business now, uh, about the 32-yard line of Stevenson. In baseball parlance, that was a frozen rope. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's a solid line drive to center field. <laughs> big Last. emotion, by the way. Uh, sorry, Matt. Big emotion on the Creek side uh, sideline after that big play, too. Bryce and Terry. And Terry inside the 20 yard line. Well, Terry's just a special player. You know, last year, I believe they called him and Knox the Thunder and Lightning. And I forget which one was which, but it really doesn't matter. I think he may be Lightning, but smaller than the Knox was last year. He's an exciting talent for this Creekside offense, and they're on the move. Terry, a solid 5'9", 200 pound senior who came in having already rushed for 530 yards in their first four games. He's averaging 132 and a half on the ground per game. Yeah. Met in the backfield by Christian Johnson. Christian Johnson with the second big tackle for loss here in the first quarter. Yeah, he's showing what he can do here for Stevenson. And you take a look at this. So we're going to watch this one more time here uh, on, this, on this play right here. Watch this as he's going to come through. Here's uh, Terry right here. And watch where he moves coming through uh, the line, going right in here. 43, shooting right through the gap right there, making the tackle for a loss. Christian Johnson, a 6'2", 235 senior. Bryson Terry tries to run to the other side, and that was Chauncey Rivers, the Georgia Bulldogs commit, who drops him behind the line of scrimmage. So Stevenson's defense gets stingy. Here's Chauncey Rivers, all 6'3", 230 of his body, 20 tackles, four and a half sacks. 24-7 sports composite, number 10 defensive end in the country. And that time, he was just a little bit too eager. Jumped off sides. Yeah, even the really good ones make mistakes once in a while. Still Rivers flipped from South Carolina to Georgia last February. He says he still hears from Gamecocks defensive coordinator Lorenzo Ward every few weeks. Just to remind him, if you change your mind, we still got a scholarship waiting on. I think you might have called him Saturday night. <laughs> Bet he did. <laughs> After the Gamecocks posted a 38-35 victory over Georgia there at williams Bryce Stadium. That is the end of the first quarter. We got a good one going here at Arrowhead Stadium in Fairburn, Georgia, where the home Creekside Seminoles defending state champs playing host to their new region rivals, the Stevenson Jaguars. Ivante Patterson took it in, and that's why the Jags have a one-point lead. At the heart of our community are the businesses that don't skip a beat. Georgia's electric membership cooperatives stand behind local commerce. Whether keeping farms running or shining a light on new ventures, we bring business, large and small, to our communities. Creating jobs, driving development, supporting dreams. Georgia's EMCs, powering our businesses, lighting the way. This moment, getting here took three years of sleepless nights and postponed vacations. Your dad said, play it safe. Your husband kept the faith. But franchising is why you partnered with Regions in the first place. We share your vision for moving forward. And at moments like this, I see. that makes all the difference. Is your business at a turning point? Regions. Some questions can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren and I've got your back. Ever think all that homework won't lead to anything? Enter GPB's video contest. You could win a cash prize and make a difference. Did you mean to throw this away? How can you help stop the drop? Let's go down to John Nelson, who's having a whole lot of fun. Is that John Nelson, the conductor? Yeah. 
I grew up in DeKalb County, so I knew all about their reputation. World-renowned, high-powered, high-octane, and to get the chance to conduct that band on Football Fridays in Georgia, are you kidding me? To be able to climb on that ladder and get them through a number in one piece, it's one of the coolest things I've ever got the chance to do here at GPB. I cannot wait to see what this season brings. Go on to GPB Sports Facebook page and let us know some of your favorite yeah. moments. This is 88.5 FM, Atlanta's new source for your news and information. Good morning. Let's start the conversation. What's on your mind, Atlanta? We want to hear from you. The news and information you've been looking for is here on 88.5. From Peachtree City to Piedmont Park, from Norcross to Decatur, GPB Atlanta is the source for stories from your community. All news, all information, all day. Back in Fairburn, Georgia, great first quarter. Stevenson on top of Creekside, 8-7. Let's check in with Grace Olson down on the sideline. All right, guys, we've heard a lot about those Jaguars tonight. Tonight, fans, it's time to put you to the test. We want to know how many losing seasons head coach of the Jaguars Ron Gartrell has at it in his 19-year tenure at Stevenson. Find us on Twitter, find us on Facebook, hey, and even Instagram. If you prefer, let us know the answer to the trivia question. We'll return in the fourth quarter with our winner for the night. Back up to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Grace. I'll help them out. You can count them on one hand. <laughs> that cuts down on your options there. Matt Stewart, Larry Smith, and John Nelson also down on the sidelines, and thanks for joining us tonight at Arrowhead Stadium. Region rivals, Region 6. Creekside moved from Region 4 last year to Region 6, but they play in separate divisions, so this game does not count in the division standings, if you will. Seminoles on offense, third down and 13 to start the second quarter. Ball is at the 22-yard line. The quarterback, Felix Harper, looking to the sidelines to get play instructions. A yeah, big stop here for Stevenson if they can get him, force a fourth down. Drop at the 18-yard line, right into the hands of Miles Clark. Would not have been enough for the first down. And so on fourth down now, let's see if they bring Alejandre out for a field goal attempt. That's exactly what they're going to do. They put him right in the numbers here. Look at this. Nigel Grant, 39, is there defending him. But it's just, you know, he, he felt him coming along. He's, he's a pretty big boy right there. Knew he was gonna, about to get pumped. Looked away just a moment, lost track of the ball. Incomplete, brings up fourth down. Clark is 180, Grant is 210. He heard Grant coming. Here's Alejandro. I love those shoes. <laughs> you can see those things up here. <laughs> Did the Georgia Dome last year? You can see them from the top. Kick on its way and no good. Had the distance but didn't put it through the uprights and Francisco Alejandro misses on the field goal attempt and the score remains 8-7. That's a big defensive stop for Stevenson onto that. You had the big punt return to get it down inside the 35. That's where they started first and 10 from the Jaguars, 31. Uh, but give credit to the Stevenson defense after getting run over on their first series, they held. And so now we've had two big offensive series, two big defensive uh, series of plays now for both teams as we now move into the second quarter. Ron Gartrell's team goes back on offense, led by their quarterback, Dewan Ford. Four, four or five passing a couple of touchdowns last week against Banneker to DJ Neal. Handoff, speed sweep, nothing doing for Kasim Tillman. Tillman yeah. got stopped in his tracks. I believe it was Sedante Fuller again. Yeah, I think it was. That was a play right there that, you know, I, I like the play call, the attempt. Sure, he had some blood on his jersey. He's got to come out of the game. Not sure who was bleeding. And that's the official time there to make sure they make that substitution to get him a first a replacement and then to get a different player on the field. Looks like Sedante Fuller been subbing in for Justin Freeman at one of the linebacker spots here. Pretty much since that opening drive. Ford, first down and more. Big carry by Dewan Ford, Andre Grimsley, the strong safety making the tackle, but way downfield and a big pickup for Ford. Yeah, what a big play there by Ford. He just uh, took off. Watch this. 
on his own and surprise everybody. You can see there the defender calling, get him. <laughs> yeah, they surprised that 24 yard pickup for 40 at only 26 yards rushing in their first three games. Nearly got all of that on that one carry right there. Good leader of this ball control offense. Hasn't thrown a pick yet this year. Of course, as you said, we, he doesn't throw very much. Only 28 pass attempts in their first three games, 15 of 28. There's one right there, thrown complete. And DJ Neal with the stiff arm and gets inside the 40 yard line. Stiff arms, Austin Shotwell, the corner. Drives him into the ground, picks up the first down. Yeah, watch this here again, gets the quick out. You want to get into his hands. He's got such great speed. We mentioned before, one of the top receivers in the state. Get him out in open space where he can make something happen. Nice stiff arm there to get a few extra yards in the first down. Neal entered the ball game, seven catches for 94 yards and three touchdowns, two of those coming last week against Banneker. Inside the first two minutes of this second quarter. Cortez Logan, not much doing for Logan on that play, picks up a couple of yards. Tackle made by Trey Philpots, the defensive end. Take a look again at this Jaguars offense and all the things that they go after. I mentioned before, three running backs in the field a lot of times. They went away from that. Matt, as you know, the past couple of years, went to more of a spread offense, and this year went back to, and Coach said, he's coming home, right? Coming home to what they know so well in this, this style of uh, offense. Ran that wing tee back in the day when they had Raymond Sanders, who went and had a nice four-year career at Kentucky, and, of course, Mike Davis, who's still a star at the University of South Carolina. 14 consecutive seasons in the playoffs for the Stevenson Jaguars, but they haven't advanced beyond the second round since going 10 and three and reaching the quarters in 2006. So it's been a while. Not sure what the holdup was here. Second down and eight. Logan trying to duck under the tackle of Joshua Moon and doesn't pick up much on the play. And it's going to be third down. It's good pursuit there by Creekside. They didn't buy the fake. You know, and let's be honest, you need to keep your eyes on these running backs here that in the first quarter ran roughshod through this Creekside defense. But again, they've tightened up since then, made this a ball game. Third down and eight. First ever meeting between these two teams. Stevenson, for the longest time, played in the largest classification here in the state of Georgia, now playing in 5A. Ford steps up in the pocket and throws, complete to Zuber, and a first down at the 24-yard line. Isaiah Zuber had only a couple of catches in the first three games, picks up a big one right here to keep the drive alive, but there is a flag down on the field, and it's going to come back as it's holding on Stevenson. Tough break there for Stevenson. Jeff Tetro, our referee tonight. So instead of a first down at the 24, it's going to be a third down way back at the 49. So third down and 24 coming up right here. Remember, in high school football, holding is marked off not from the line of scrimmage, but the spot of the foul. Look at these players here, are both wearing gold socks. Goes back to that go gold they're doing tonight to increase childhood cancer awareness and raise money for research. Great cause. Third down, going up top and incomplete. Looking downfield for the junior, Eric Elder, and it's gonna be fourth down. And so they lost a first down at the 24 yard line and now they have to punt from their other side of the 50, from their side of the 50. That was a tough sequence, nice job by the Creekside defense, but that's where those penalties are just so tough. And boy, that's what keeps coaches up at night. When you, you draw up a play, it works, first down, you're moving the ball, but that penalty brings you back, and instead of getting points on the board, now you've got to give the ball away. Joshua Moon had a big punt return his last time out. Stands at his 20, and we 
saw a moment ago. Dexter DJ Neal standing at his 35 yard line to kick. A little bit more arc on this one. As the ball goes out of bounds, and that's a really effective kick right there. You kick away from Moon and kick it out of bounds, and so Creekside will be at the 11 yard line. You don't have the GPB Sports app yet, then you don't know what you're missing. You can watch tonight's game live on the app if you have to leave home, get the latest scores from around the state, football news, blogs, and so much more. It's free at the App Store. Download it today. Good crowd here by both uh, teams, both bands here as well, Matt. Stevenson bringing their band down from Stone Mountain. Makes for a very festive back and forth. So first and 10 for Creekside. Ball is at the 11-yard line. Bryson Terry. And Terry close to a first down. Nice run by Bryson Terry. Rick Murdoch making the tackle. Yeah, if we get a chance to see this, uh, watch this over here on the, on the left side. Watch what happens to the lane that goes right in here. Now go ahead and roll it, guys. Watch what these guys do, the seal. This is Terry down here, the big number 72 going in and just taking him out. That's the hole right there, and that's just what they do so well. We saw this all last year, uh, this offensive line and the big uh, number 72 right there. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Uh, Harrell, Markel Harrell, 300 pounds, and that's why he's heading on to play big time college football. Yeah, Markel Harrell committed to Auburn in April after he flipped from Ole Miss. He was down on the plains a couple of weeks ago when the Tigers defeated San Jose State. Playing offensive tackle here for the Creekside Seminoles, as is Venzel Bulwar. Both of them probably offensive guards at the next level simply because of their height. I don't know 6'3", 6'4", sounds big to you at home, but for an SEC tackle, they're looking for 6'5 and up to play that tackle position. If you're shorter than that, you're going to play inside. So first and 10. Got good instincts. Uses his feet well for a big man. Look forward to seeing what he can do on the next level. Bryson Terry runs right into the teeth of that defense. Had no place to go. And Matt, watch, watch him again. You're watching number 72 here. Watch this replay. That's Markel Harrell we we're talking about here a moment ago. Watch number 72. Watch what he does right here. Number 72. He just takes this guy and says, you're going to go this way. And a little bit of a hole there in the back. Did a nice job of holding <laughs> number right. 33, Aaron Sterling, as well. But hey, if it's not called, right? <laughs> I didn't see a flag. <laughs> he got away with it. Got a hold of that jersey and pads and wouldn't let him go, <laughs> now would he? That, that's right. Lost a yard on the play, second down. Harper slings it out to the outside. Perkinson with the catch and a first down as Perkinson was able to slip out of the tackle of Darren Bowles and get the first down. Tackled downfield by the linebacker, Nigel Grant. It's a play that Creekside likes to run. A little play action, fake to the running back, freezer linebacker. One more look at it here. Again, watch this. Fakes. Everyone holds just for a split second. Gets it over the hands of the defender. Good effort there to get out of that tackle and get the first down. Close to five minutes into the second quarter, Stevenson and Creekside both scoring on their opening drives. Bryson Terry again tries the interior of that Stevenson defensive line. I believe the defensive end, Drew Harris, made that tackle. Terry's had some big games already this season. He rushed for 204 yards in there. 55-41 win against South Cobb. In fact, they had two 200-yard rushers in that game against South Cobb. So second down and eight, ball at the 37-yard line. Flag's gonna come out, gonna have a face mask on that as the pass was thrown complete to Tyshawn Carter. Well, Carter had the right idea. He was trying to get those two defenders to kind of pick each other. He almost got him, uh, but again, it's a face mask, and this will be a penalty, looks like, against Stevenson. Uh, 
No, no, a holding. Well, if he wants the replay on this, we're going to say before the face. That's what Coach Downs wants. He wants the face mask. I hope we have a good angle at that. But I think, again, there's another receiver making the, the, the play, trying to help create that pick. Must have got him for a hold. Let's check in with John Nelson on the sideline. John? In that mess of having all those players in that little bit of space, it was in the pick. And it's a difference between a hold and an illegal use of hands. And so it wasn't necessarily a hold. It went that extra step. And that was why the penalty was called that way. You know, John, I think it's kind of like for Seinfeld fans, the difference between a pick and a scratch. No? No? Anybody? There you go, baby. All right. All right. Somebody laughs. There you go. There you go. I'm here all night, folks. That was definitely a pick and a hold. <laughs> so, Larry, you got to remember, we have to tip our waitresses after lines like there that. There you go. There you go. You're, so you're here all night? Try the veal. Yeah. Just checking. <laughs> I don't know. After that, I may not be. Bryce and Terry right up the middle. <laughs> Carlito Gonzalez, the strong safety in on that tackle. Now it's going to be third down. Clicking under six minutes to play here in the first half. I'll tell you what, man, I'm impressed with the defensive adjustments that both teams yeah. made. I mean, that, it looked like it'd be a scoring fest if that was two opening drives, but nothing since then. Stevenson went 88 on their first drive, all but one play on the ground, and then Creekside came back and went 71 on their opening drive, but the defenses have buckled down. As you said, the coaches have made adjustments. Third down and long now for the Seminoles. Keeper, Harper, flag out. Harper dropped by Nigel Grant, the Sam linebacker, did not pick up the first down, not close to it. We'll check the call on the field. I think this may be going against Creekside, we'll see. And if it is, I'm imagining that Stevenson will decline. It is holding, and Stevenson will decline and make him punt. Creekside Seminoles winning the state championship last year for the first time in program history. Lots for the Seminoles to cheer about a year ago. 15-0, the first time they'd ever gone undefeated in the entire schedule. Joshua Moon standing at his 25 to kick. End over end, Ladler back to take it. Instead, we'll let it hop up in the air and be downed at the 25-yard line. And that is where the Stevenson Jaguars will go back on offense with 4.54 to play here in the first half. Today, companies in the aerospace, advanced manufacturing, and film industries need skilled workers, and the earning potential is high. Go Build Georgia can show you where the jobs are and what skills you need to get them. And the Technical College System of Georgia has fast, affordable training for these great paying careers. Build your blueprint for success at GoBuildGeorgia.com and look to the Technical College System of Georgia to put your plan into action. Coming to PBS, Finding Your Roots. Author Stephen King and actors Gloria Rubin and Courtney B. Vance uncover their father's roots. Is that my dad? That is Donald Edwin wow. King. Now, I've never seen this picture before. The English and German synagogue. Shut up. <laughs> I want to know everything about my dad. You got to know where you're from. Finding Your Roots. Tuesday at 9 on GPB. Back in Fairburn, Georgia, Stevenson leading Creekside 8-7 in this Region 6-5A battle. Matt Stewart, Larry Smith, John Nelson, Grace Olson with you, and Mark Harmon coming up at halftime. Let's take a look at the Creekside resume. State champions a year ago, lost in the semifinals to Statesboro back in 2000. Prior to last year, that was their best season ever. Won their sixth region title 
last year. They're first since 2006. They've had five undefeated regular seasons. And their NFL alumni include Eric Berry, the former Tennessee Volunteer star, now with the Kansas City Chiefs. He's their one current player, still in the, still in the National Football League. And of course, his two younger twin brothers, Eric and or Elliot and Evan, going to Tennessee last year. They were part of that state championship team a year ago. Freshman now with the Volunteers. Bulwar will join them up there next year. Another big carry for Dewan Ford. This is something we had not seen from Ford in the first three games, but Ford very effective. Exact same run as he had before, and it's a first down carry. I think it's a good, good play here coming out of the break. Again, look at the big seal there by his offensive lineman. Huge hole for him. Protects the ball on the hit. Big gain, the first down. And that's their biggest play on offense they've had now and, and since that early drive. So first and 10, there you see that offensive line. No lineman smaller than 260 pounds on that offensive lineman for the offensive line for the Jaguars. Not much doing that time as Kasim Tillman got the handoff. Alex Johnson, I believe, in on that tackle for the Seminoles. Wes Johnson coming in 5'10", 205. He's right in there. Second down and nine. Sedante Fuller also a part of that. Stop. Ball at the 35, under four minutes to play here in the first half. Settled into a defensive battle since those opening long drives by both teams. Man going up top, got his tight end open, and Wadham has it for a first down across the 40. First pass reception of the season for Dennis Wadham. Robert Catledge, the safety, knocked him down, but not into a big gainer for the Jaguars. As we talked about, they don't pass much, but he says when we do pass, we want to be successful. This was a great play right here. He releases off the line, uh, waits for the ball to come around, gets behind that defense. Puts it right up there in his numbers. Another big play. They're on the move. Wanham, a 6'2", 215 junior with the catch. First and 10 from the 37. They go to the other side, and... Trying to get the ball to D.J. Neal. Coverage there by the corner, Gerard Stanley. Gerard Stanley, one of the top corners on this team. Yeah, he wanted a flag on that, but I think the referee decided it wasn't a catchable ball. And now it's going to be second down and 10. You'll see. Dewan Ford run to the sideline. That's where he gets his plays. You know, this is NFL. You don't have the uh, <laughs> you don't have the speaker in your headset. You don't get it called in from the sideline. Ford again going deep. Zuber the intended target through behind him, and a flag is out on the play. And this time the flag comes out on Gerard Stanley. And that time they got him. It's one. You can hear the uh, the coaches here in the <laughs> in the booth next to us uh, and their reaction on that play. Double covered back there. Unless he was holding him, that you might call that an uncatchable ball because the ball was thrown way behind him. Here's the call against Creekside. They now mark it off. Best drive Stevenson's had since the opening drive. As you mentioned, they went 88 yards. All running plays. Big gaps in the hole. Creekside has figured out a way to stop that and have it shut him out ever since then. So that'll be a first down for Stevenson as they mark off the penalty and spot the ball at the 22. I think Jared Stanley, they're a part of that mix. We've got a timeout here in the field. Creekside pulls down, going to call him to the sideline and make some adjustments here. So if he can make, kind of make a, make a stop here, 315 mark. Let's take another look at that. Yeah. Is this a catchable ball here? Ford throws it up, is under pressure. Let's see what happens uh, down. And it must have happened before it comes into screen. Unless, yeah, I think it, he must have held him before he came into our, our camera angle there because I didn't see much of anything at that point. That was unfortunate for Creekside because that was an uncatchable ball. Zuber was not going to get that. Yeah. He was thrown behind him and too deep. But it gives Stevenson a first down with 3.15 to play in the half and a first and 10 now at the Creekside 22-yard line.
timeout here on the field as again it's coach downs talking to his defense and we saw earlier uh, Matt what happened after that first drive he really laid into him for about five or six minutes and uh, we'll see if this talk is any good we, sit, we showed you the Creekside resume here's the Stevenson resume their record since 2000 a sparkling 137 and 35 seven region titles they all came in a nine-year period between 2001 and 2009 made the playoffs 14 straight years they've had 34 SEC signees in the last 10 years, six NFL players. They have four players currently in the National Football League, including linebacker Jermaine Cunningham, played at Florida and now with the New York Jets. It's first and 10. And Ford again calling his own number there. This time, Creekside stays home and holds him to a, almost no game. Clock now under three minutes to play here in the half. Dewan Ford, 6'3", senior. Ron Gartrell says he's played better than expected. The thing they're most pleased with are the zero turnovers and a timeout called by the Jaguars, stopping the clock with 2.36 to play in the second quarter. Yeah, I, 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 they were never comfortable with that. I don't know what they saw out there. But the coaches, coaching staff didn't appear comfortable to start, change the play. Well, I decided why not talk about it. Stevenson currently ranked number three in the GPB 5A top 10. Not that you would know, they lost 18 starters off last year's 9-3 team, including 23 players who signed college scholarships. That means they have five players who weren't even starters who got college scholarships last year. John Nelson on the sideline, John. I have been keeping my ear in Coach Downs' huddles over the last couple of minutes. The biggest thing after the long play where he called the timeout, it was just to calm them down and to make sure that they could get a stop because he wants the offense back out on the field one more time to try to get the lead before we go to half. They've been diagnosing that one play that has been burning them most of the second quarter where the quarterback keeps or they go around the left edge. They've been calling it on the right time. It's just the players have been getting late in the pursuit. They got to it on the last time, but uh, the first couple of times, Dewan Ford was able to get some yardage on it. Picked up only two yards the last time he ran it, and it's second down. Ford being chased, got a block. Throwing downfield and incomplete. Good defense there, good coverage in the secondary by the Seminoles. Now, Stevenson does not have a bona fide kicker. In fact, they lost that Miami Central game because they... Uh, did not have a kicker and they had to go for two point conversions and they end up losing by one point. The so, coach was saying first time in the program history that they didn't have a kicker. And they've had five kickers sign scholarships during his previous 18 seasons as the head coach. They just really have not found one yet. Gotta blame the soccer coach for not giving him a guy who's a, it's a kicker. <laughs> Third down. Caught by Zuber and a first down inside the 10. And Zuber make that DJ Neal. DJ Neal with the touchdown. And it is 14 to 7. Nice play there as they get back on the, in the scoring column for the first time since their opening drive. Nice play call. And again, efficient passing. They don't pass much. It's about an 80-20. A ratio run to pass for this Jaguars offense. They say when they do pass, they want to be successful. And that's one thing they've done again. Still no turnovers, no interceptions by uh, Ford. Great uh, catch and run right there by Neal to get the touchdown for Stevenson. And again, going for two. Like you said, no kicker. Man rolling. Man, not going to get there. And he had a receiver there. I don't think he saw him in time. And Aaron Sterling was out there. Number 33 could not get him the ball. So the two point conversion comes up short. And Stevenson has a 14 7 lead. 
Take a look, another look at this touchdown here, the TCSG touchdown replay. And looking at Ford here, looking back again. Watch the quick release here, and then Neal. Skips a couple of tackles again in the end zone. That's just nice speed, and that's why he's headed on to the next level after high school. One more look again. Ford, as we said again, very efficient. Doesn't make mistakes. And he's got Stevenson on top, 14-7. DJ Neal with his fourth touchdown of the season. A seven-play, 83-yard drive capped on the 22-yard pass from Man to Neal. To make that Ford to Neal. Ford with his fourth touchdown pass of the season. And he's a busy man as he handles kickoffs as well. Bryson Terry back deep for the Seminoles, as is Julian Gibbs. Neil does a bit of everything. He made a mention before he's committed to South Carolina. Coach says he kicks off for us, he punts for us, plays wide receiver for us. Yeah, he had three, three touchbacks last week in yeah. the victory over Banneker. Yeah. Good athlete. Again, kicked right into the hands of the linebacker, Dewan Duncan, on the line drive, and he falls on it and around the 27-yard line. So let's see what Creekside can do with 219 left in the half. <laughs> I tell you what, when you look at this, I mean, this is why you don't kick extra points. It's like a cannonball. Look at this. Boom. <laughs> Just... <laughs> and when you've got pads on, that's hard to, that's hard to catch coming at you. <laughs> it comes out of a jugs machine. <laughs> yeah, I've often wondered, especially at the high school level, why, you know, they don't work on the on kickoffs, uh, you know, uh, uh, just a line drive kick along the ground, yeah. you know, a little hop and maybe result in a turnover. Yeah. Especially if you don't have somebody who can kick it into the end zone. Harper completes the ball, and Clark, I believe, Miles Clark with the catcher was that Perkinson. It was Perkinson instead, and that's a first down. And when we look at this, and again, the quick out, we've seen him run this a couple of times, the fake right there to Terry. He's lefty, so that's an easy toss for him. And then again, you've got the uh, interaction out there, the little interference with the other receiver. Big play, first down out near mid midfield. Bryson Terry. Terry across the 50-yard line. Gets down to the 49 as the clock continues to run. Under two minutes to play in the half. That was Carlito Gonzalez on the tackle for the Jaguars. Pickup of six, second down and four coming up. Good luck there at Terry, as you mentioned, already 500 yards, more than 500 yards in the first four games already, and he's had a big game tonight. Yeah, 12 carries, 47 yards for Terry thus far. And Harper was not ready for the snap. Play gets blown dead. You saw at the end of that play, Bryson Terry and number 12, Nick Lundy for Stevenson exchanging a few words. Lundy played for Tucker last year, the team that Creekside beat 52-28 in the state championship game. So while this is the first ever meeting between Stevenson and Creekside, not the first ever meeting for Lundy versus Creekside. <laughs> Nick Lundy, the transfer from Tucker, three-star wide receiver commit, committed to Nebraska. Bryson Terry on the screen pass, first down. And he is down to about the 39-yard line. Great balance by Bryson Terry on the catch and run. It's another play that Kriegs likes to pull out and try to catch the defense off guard. And watch the replay here and watch what happens. Is, again, Terry's going to uh, come out again. Sees the blitz coming, gets the, some of the linemen out in front of him, blocking, first down and more. Back the other way, that's Perkinson. Perkinson, first down and more, and Perkinson down inside the 25-yard line. Perkinson has become their go-to guy in the absence of Jason Stanley. As he has Stanley again, the senior injured, he's got that knee injury. Again, a little misdirection, nice fake. Freezes the linebackers. Clock moving again. Bryson Terry inside the 15, inside the 10. And the ball, was it stolen by Ladler? Ladler came away with it. 
Khalil Ladler came out of there with the football in his hands. Yeah, I think they're going to try to say they're going to, that the play maybe was dead. Let's see what they're going to call here. They're talking about it. It appeared that he might have pulled it, stripped it right out of his hands as he was falling down, and it seems. Well, the ball never hit the ground, and it is Stevenson's ball. It is Stevenson's ball. Here's one more look at it. Let's take a look at this. Great defensive play right here. You can see that a Terry again running along, and there it is. Strips it out. He does. Just takes it right away from him. That's a great play and great camera work as well by our uh, GPB photographers. That's just an outstanding play. That was very, very impressive. Khalil Ladler, the junior, we told you at the top of the show, he's one of the players to watch on this Jaguars defense. Junior quarterback, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Auburn, a lot of SEC and ACC schools chasing this young man, offering him uh, scholarships, and you can see why. He makes that big play. Stevenson, I should say Creekside, was on the run, on the move, uh, heading in to score, takes the momentum away, takes the ball away, and almost assures that they'll have the lead here. Uh, at halftime. Ladler with one of the biggest plays of the game. His brother, Kenny, was a first-team All-SEC safety his senior season last year at Vanderbilt, and Vanderbilt among the teams that have offered him, but just about every team in the ACC or the SEC has offered Khalil Ladler. He's just now in his junior season. Ladler says uh, LSU, one of the teams he's liked growing up because of their great history of defensive backs going on to the National Football League. But his position coach at Stevenson, of course, Demario Mentor, played at the University of Georgia. Says he probably won't wrap up his recruitment until after his junior season. Face mask is the call against Creekside. And Creekside needs to be careful now. Still one timeout left for Stevenson. Again, they don't have a kicker, so there's no chance of a field goal here. With the 15-yard mark off, and that puts the ball up at the 36-yard line, first down and 10. One more look at it, and it was pretty obvious here as you watch watching this play. See the face mask right there. That's an easy call to make. 15-yard penalty. I believe it was Taj Perry, the defensive tackle. He grabbed the face mask, so 36 seconds to play in the half. Now the clock is running again. Jaguars do have one timeout remaining. Neal went streaking down the sideline. Apparently, Dewan Ford thought he was going to run it out and threw it out of bounds. Or he saw that there were four... <laughs> Maroon shirts following down the sideline. <laughs> Never seen so many guys that chase one receiver downfield. <laughs> so now 17 seconds left in the half. Well played first half by both teams. Good coaching. Let's see if they just take a knee now. Hand it off. Ivante Patterson. No place to run for Patterson. Justin Freeman, the linebacker, making the tackle. And that's going to be the final play of the first half. Unless a timeout's been called, and it has been by Creekside. Interesting. That's interesting they take a timeout right there. Yeah, they've got two, so they've got one left now. But yeah, five seconds left. And it's not fourth down, it's third down, so. Stevenson can just run the clock out here, take a knee, but the timeout was called by Creekside. Stopping the clock with five seconds. Stevenson, a 14-7 lead. Jaguars open the game, opening drive, went 88 yards, capped it on an eight-yard touchdown run by Patterson. Creekside followed with a 71-yard drive on their first possession, capped on the 32-yard fourth down pass from Harper to Gibbs, and then just uh, two minutes and 17 seconds ago on the game clock, a 22-yard pass from Ford to Neal to cap an 83-yard drive for Stevenson, and that's where we stand right now, 14-7. Let's see what Stevenson's got in these final five seconds. We saw Freakside coach Downs 18-1 and one here in his one plus seasons in charge of the Seminoles. 
So Zuber will be the deep back to make sure nothing happens funny here, and Ford takes a knee, and that's going to be the end of the half. Fun first half between these two Region 6 5A powers. Stevenson going to head to the locker room with a 14 to 7 lead. I think really one of the storylines of this ball game, though, has been how dominant both offenses were, Larry, on their first series, but how the defenses made the checks, made the adjustments, and buckled down and turned this into a defensive game in that second quarter. Yeah, it was that was really impressive with, with on both sides, the adjustments that they made. You're right. Um, I, I think both coaches can feel good about some of the things that, that they've done, Matt. John Nelson is standing by with Coach Ron Gartrell. Thank you very much, Matt. Big defensive play there at the end of the half. Yeah, I mean, you know, need those sometimes. Came at the right time. You know, we were struggling a little bit on defense, trying to stop them. You know, we've got such an explosive offense. So anything that happens like that, it helps. So we're glad it happened. And at the same time, you knew what you were getting into with this one, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we knew it would be this type of game. And I hope everybody's enjoying it because I'm sweating bullets. But uh, we should come out in the second half. They have a great second half team. They've come back a couple times this year, so we just got to make sure we're on our P's and Q's. All right, so go find the rest of the alphabet. We'll see you at the second half. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> Mark, halftime show starts right now. Thank you very much, John Nelson. Coming up at the half, we will hear from both marching bands, and they are both terrific marching bands. We'll also have scores from around the great state of Georgia. Grace Olson will talk to some very proud parents and the social media world. And we'll have all that and more coming up on the GPB Halftime Show right now. We are at the break at Arrowhead Stadium in the swamp. Stevenson leads the defending 5A state champs, the Creekside Seminoles, by a touchdown, 14-7. We're back after this. Georgia cotton farmers want you to know cotton is grown in 91 Georgia counties on over 1 million acres. Cotton makes a $2.5 billion economic impact and accounts for over 15,000 jobs in Georgia. Cotton's innovative production has lowered water use per pound of cotton by 75% since 1980. One bale of cotton can make 215 pairs of denim jeans or 700 towels. Cotton is a natural choice for Georgia. Some questions can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren and I've got your back. Sometimes inspiration comes in the most unusual way. Enter GPB's video contest. You could win a cash prize and make a difference. How can you help stop the drop? Each week, GPB brings you the latest in high school sports. Hi again, everybody. But we want to hear what you have to say. Tell us what's going on with your team. Share your favorite moments. Post your own pictures and videos. And let everyone know why your team will go all the way. Just log on and like us on Facebook where you can post comments, pictures, and videos to earn your own team bragging rights. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter too. In the new digital arms race. My computer, my iPad, I knew that I was being hacked. Who will win? In the past it may have been weapons of mass destruction. The greatest threat today is the keyboard. This is not hackers in their basement. When it first came up, my mouth was like wide open, going, oh my god. Malicious programs being able to literally blow things up. Rise of the Hackers on Nova. On Why Wednesday at 9, only on GPB. During this performance, one student will drop out of high school. Be there for your big finish. Welcome back to the GPB Halftime Show. Right now, let's check in with the Stevenson High School Marching Band, brought to you by Regions Bank.
Stevenson High School Band brought to you by Regions Bank and their tribute to disco. If you want to see more of the Stevenson High School Band and the Creekside Marching Band, check out our Facebook page a little bit into the third quarter. Now let's check in with Grace Olson, our social media correspondent. Grace. Thank you, Mark. Mark, fans, we've been telling you about these bands. I told you about them in the pregame show. They are loud. I can barely hear myself think over here on this sideline. But like we've told you all game long, this is a historic meeting between Creekside and Stevenson. They never played before. And we're recording the whole historical event all up and down, inside and out, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. So I hope you've been following us all night, all night long on social media because we've got everything there for you. We've got you covered. Now, we issued a call to action this week to fans of Creekside, to fans of Stevenson, to fans of teams all over the state asking you guys to send in videos showing your spirit, Instagram videos, 15 seconds long. And the winner this week, we said the team that gets the most likes on their video is going to be the winner. So I promised uh, Peachtree Ridge that I'd show their video on air. So here it is, Peachtree Ridge Lions. They're the winners of the week. They posted uh, this video of their players. This is how they show their spirit, by showing their players dominating on the field during practice. So congrats, Peachtree Ridge Lions. They got over 300 likes on this video in a matter of a day. So thanks, guys, for joining. And everyone else, make sure, no matter which team you're cheering for, to send us your spirited Instagram videos. 15 seconds long, it's easy to do. Tag GPV Sports and use the hashtag Spirit Worth Sharing. Back over to you, Mark. Thank you very much, Grace Olson. Now time to send it over to John Nelson, who's standing alongside the principal of Creekside High School, Mr. Ronald Maxwell. The time to play Are You Smarter, John? Yes, it's time for me to go into the principal's office, a place I was in a great deal during my high school days in the days of black and white television. Catching up with Principal Maxwell, what's it been like around here? Uh, today has been a great day. We had a great pep rally where we um, had a fun uh, event where we uh, did a pie, pie in the face. So I have my face of a pie uh -huh. with three students. So it was a great day. It's a great day at Creekside. All right, it is now that time to play the game that we always play here at the half. It's called Are You Smarter? And I have, from Nicole, if you would please thank you very much, the envelope, which I'm going to try and open. Actually, why don't you go ahead and open the envelope for it's the dotted line. Go ahead and tear it. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, can you blow into it like Johnny Carson? I don't know about that. All right, let's see. Peel it. See, you need nails. There we go. Okay, here we go. Here's the question. Pull. There we go. All right, the question is, Recently revealed by the Atlanta Braves, what name will be given to the organization's new baseball stadium? Is it A, Triscuit Field? A variety of flavors there. B, SunTrust Park, C, Segway Stadium, or D, Amazon Arena? I'm going to try A, Triscuit Field. It is B, SunTrust Park. Remember your days of filling out standardized tests? Yes, they always sir. would tell you B. Yes, yes. B, SunTrust Park. Thanks for playing along. Right, You've been a great sport, and thanks right. for being a host tonight. Okay, thank you. Mark, let's send it back over to you. That's another edition of Are You Smarter? All right, coming up a little bit later on our GPB Halftime Show, John will be back for his back roads and backfield segment on the toughest region in Class Single A. Plus, we'll hear from the Creekside Marching Band. We'll also hear more right now from the marching band from Stevenson High School. Grace Olson will talk to some very proud parents. It's all ahead when the Football Fridays in Georgia Halftime Show continues right here on the great GPB. Stay with us. Questions can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren and I've got your back. What is by moonlight and empty field is by the magic of electricity, sacred ground. As the official energy provider of the GHSA, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives proudly support our student athletes. We are there 
illuminating the glory moments fans just have to see. Capturing the hustle, elevating champions, sharing the win. Georgia's EMCs, empowering our youth, lighting the way. Are you willing to give a helping hand? Enter GPB's video contest. You could win a cash prize and make a difference. How can you help stop the drop? This is 88.5 FM, Atlanta's new source for your news and information. Good morning. Let's start the conversation. What's on your mind, Atlanta? We want to hear from you. The news and information you've been looking for is here on 88.5. From Peachtree City to Piedmont Park, from Norcross to Decatur, GPB Atlanta is the source for stories from your community. All news, all information, all day. Coming to PBS, Finding Your Roots. Author Stephen King and actors Gloria Rubin and Courtney B. Vance. You got to know where you're from. Is that my dad? The English and German synagogue? <laughs> Shut up! Finding Your Roots. Tuesday at 9 on GPB. Welcome back to the GPB Halftime Show. The Stevenson Band just leaving the field. The Creekside Band getting ready to take action here. It is 14 to 7 at the half here at Arrowhead Stadium. Stevenson leading the Seminoles of Creekside. Let's check out the Georgia EMC scoreboard real quick right now. Veterans in Valdosta right now. An updated score. Valdosta leading this game now. 20 to nothing that game at the half. It's cut. North Gwinnett in Collins Hill. It's 14, uh, 21 to 14 right now. Collins Hill leading that one in the second half. At the half, Kell leads Forsyth Central by a touchdown, 14 to 7. Buford leading big at the half, and it is Jones County over Northside Warner Robins, 14 to 10. Northside Warner Robins, the top ranked team. For complete Georgia High School football scores, download the GPB Sports app at the iPhone or at the App Store. It is absolutely free. And now over to John Nelson and Rich Novak for our signature moment. It's now time for our signature moment. Once again, we welcome in the president and general manager of Signa, Rich Novak. And we're kind of getting there. The weather will we'll feel it a little tonight, maybe third and fourth quarter. But as we're going, colder weather just around the corner. And tonight's topic is layering and its importance. So, John, thanks for having me again. And it is important. The weather is changing. Fall is here. It's getting cooler. And it feels great during the day. But when most people go outside to work out, particularly at night after work, the weather changes. It gets colder, it gets colder faster. When the sun goes down, the temperature drops 10 degrees at a, at a minimum. And the further we go into the fall, the more important it becomes for people to start to layer up. So instead of just that thin t-shirt you wore over the summer, maybe it's that thin t-shirt with something heavier over top of it. At some point, you're gonna wanna get to a pullover, sweatshirt, hoodie, whatever. And then let's go from the top down and work our way all the way down to the bottom. What about everything from waist down? Because I know that you got to keep the legs important. That's important too with muscles down there and with feet as well. Yeah, so keeping the whole body at a decent temperature and particularly warm while you're working out is incredibly important. So at some point you're going to want to go from shorts to uh, whether it's long pants or sweatpants, uh, which are easy to get most any places. They're comfortable, easy to walk in, plenty of movement. And then ultimately the most important apparatus you're gonna have is are your shoes. So first rule of uh, thumb in, when it comes to shoes and footwear is you wanna be comfortable. Second rule of thumb is you wanna have something that's gonna give you plenty of cushion. You wanna be able to absorb the shock, whether it's running, walking, and you wanna be able to do that continuously. You also want a shoe that's gonna uh, be able to keep your ankle in place and let you move comfortably and continuously uh, without having to worry about slipping up. The last thing people wanna look for in shoes is this. Unless you're really a, a big time runner or even a professional runner, you're probably gonna want shoes that stay away from the mesh. The mesh allows stuff to get in, whether it's dirt, small pebbles, and moisture especially. So you're walking outside or running outside, 
uh, right after it's rained or maybe even during a, a light rain. Getting that moisture inside your shoe can do uh, bad things to you, to your feet in particular. More importantly, it's very hard to get it out of the shoe. So it can be an ongoing problem that you really are going to want to avoid. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out with us once again. That was your signature moment with President and GM Rich Novak of Cigna. Mark, we'll send it back over to you. Thank you, John. Time now to check in with the Creekside High School Marching Band brought to you by Regents Banks. Tonight's theme is Showcase of Drill and Dance. tonight brought to you by Regents Bank. It's going to be an action-packed season all the way through our Football Fridays in Georgia. Time now to check out the Georgia EMC Football Fridays in Georgia schedule. Next week we head to Northcutt Stadium. A great game as Hillgrove visits Marietta, followed by trips to Grayson, North Cobb, and Walton. On October 24th, Collins Hill tackles Mill Creek, followed by Tucker at Lovejoy and Gainesville at Flowery Branch. Then it's off to the playoffs. We've got you covered all the way to the state championship games in the Georgia Dome on December 12th and 13th. GPB is your home for high school sports. No one does high school sports better than GPB. Time now for our back roads and backfield segments with John Nelson brought to you by the uh, Georgia Cotton Commission. All right, what you got for us today? A tough, tough region, I hear. A lot of folks like to think that Region 16A is one of the toughest regions in the entire country, but I will give you one of the toughest regions in the entire state. And for that, we go to South Georgia and Region 2, single A. Let's start with the team that got the closest. Rich McWhorter's Charlton County Indians made it to the final last year in single A public before a loss to Marion County. They have four titles and are chasing a fifth. A lot of folks think Clinch County, the five-time champ, will be chasing them and be chased themselves this year. A statement head coach Jim Dickerson doesn't dispute. You know, we like to say it's like the SEC of Class A football because every, every Friday night anybody's capable of beating you. Lanier's a up-and-coming program and uh, you know, from top to bottom, Wilcox, you know the tradition of athletes that Wilcox has had, and anybody in this region can beat anybody. The 2009 champ Wilcox County's always there. Homegrown player and head coach Mark Ledford knows every week is tough and makes all eight region teams ready for the 16-team postseason. We don't have as much tradition as those guys have, but, you know, we've, we've made a good run here in the past few years. And uh, the Turner Counties and the Tail Fairs and all those guys just keep getting better and better. So, yeah, it's a, it's a strong region, and I think, you know, anyone that would like to come out and see a football game on Friday night, uh, any of our teams in the region, good, there's a good chance you're going to see a good football game, a good football team. And then there's the new guy. Former Fitzgerald coach Buddy Nobles has moved eight miles down the road to Osceola and Irwin County, one of two other teams to have a title that currently play in the region. He's seen it from the other sideline and knows what he's getting into. To me, it's all relative. Everybody talks about Region 16A, but you know we just don't have 140 kids. We've got 60 kids. Charlton County has 60 kids. You know Wilcox will have 60 or 55. Whatever, all the schools will be the same. There just won't be 5,000 people at the game. There may be 2,000 people at the game. So it's all relative. It's just high school football. It's still the same field as they play on at the bigger level. And Buddy Nobles was part of that Robbie Pruitt staff. And Mark, coming into tonight, which was the beginning of region play, you had Atkinson County and Telfair County, who were both coming in at 3-0 and before they got into region play. So this one could be in the blender for the entire seven weeks. All right, back roads and backfields brought to you by the Georgia Cotton Commission. The natural choice. 
for Georgia. All right, let's send it over to Grace Olson for another segment of Rent Check. Grace? That's right. This is Rent Check. This is where we check in with the parents of some of these athletes because, man, are they a big part of the process right now. We have Felix Sr. and Tamara. These are the parents of Felix Harper you see on the field playing quarterback. Now let's bring up some photos of this guy when he was a little man. There's one you're going to see where he's kind of singled out in his purple and gold. He was the quarterback then, and I hear he has always played quarterback. Always played quarterback since he was seven years old. Pretty neat, right, Mom? Yes. <laughs> he's a leader. He's the natural leader out there on the field. Now let's get down to some trivia. First question, I'm going to stick with you, Dad, for the first one. Uh, what is his favorite play to run? Mm, favorite play, he's quarterback. He's probably got 100 of them in mind. I'm going to pick uh, aces. I'm going to say aces, a pass play. He says the 97 post. 97 post. I was close. It was a pass play. <laughs> All right, Mom, next one's for you. Where and when did he throw his first touchdown pass? It was at College Park when he was with the Falcons to, I don't know, to Kobe, one of his friends. He said versus Langston to Jason Stanley. about high school. Oh, I just realized he's thinking of high school. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking of high school. I'm sorry. Yes, it was Jason to number 11, first varsity, Jason Stanley. All right, well, you guys are still really on top of it. Now, I asked him how he gets in the zone before a game. Dad? Mm, a music guy. I would say a music guy. Uh, he's fluttering around with probably Jay-Z or Drake. He told me music, and I loved this answer because he says listening to music and thinking about family. So I thought that was so sweet. Oh, that's my baby. What a great boy they've got. Well, guys, thank you so much for participating in Rent Trek. I have to say you did a great job. And let's give them their uh, Football Fridays in Georgia t-shirts. You can wear these the rest of the season. And uh, thanks again for joining us. Let's send it back over to Mark. She says, go GPB, right? That's go right. GPB, Creekside. All right, Mark. All right, go GPB. Time now for our career play of the game, brought to you by the Technical College System of Georgia. Georgia continues to grow its service sector economy and jobs in the hospitality industry are growing as well. Thousands of positions for chefs, food and beverage managers, and hotel and travel professionals are expected to open in the next few years. Tourism and culinary careers are fantastic for anyone who loves working with people in a fast-paced environment. Dedication, the right training, and a bold attitude are ingredients for success. That's why hospitality industry is back in the spotlight as our career play of the game. This message is brought to you by the Technical College System of Georgia. For more information, just go to tcsg.edu for more info. Time now to send it back up to the booth to Matt and Larry for call the second half of this terrific game. Take it away, guys. All right, thank you, Mark. Great first half, 14-8. All three scores, Larry, coming on long drives. Stevenson, a 88-yard opening drive. Creekside, a 71-yard opening drive, and then late in that second quarter, an 83-yard drive by Stevenson, and then a tremendous defensive play by Khalil Ladler. We'll show you all the highlights in just a moment. Some questions can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers, anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren, and I've got your back. As a strong, stable bank, Regions is always looking for opportunities to boost the vitality of our communities. In addition to offering financial solutions for our customers, we are committed to supporting local initiatives and organizations that help our neighborhoods thrive. Regions is proud to be a partner with GPB in building a better Georgia. Football Fridays in Georgia is live every Friday on GPB during football season, and you never know who you're going to run into. Sometimes it's a very famous comedian who thinks you might be a redneck. I've interviewed Jeff Foxworthy before, but this was one of those rare times when I got to interview him as a dad. His daughter was homecoming queen. I'm thrilled for her tonight. This is her night. And I also got to tell everyone what Jeff's middle name is. I cannot wait for this season of Football Fridays. Go online and let us know some of your favorite moments. During this performance, one student will drop out of high school. Be there for your big finish.
Welcome back to Creekside, getting ready for the final 24 minutes. Second half about to start with Creekside and Stevenson. Creekside down 14-7 here with Coach Downs as we start the second half. And if you could sum up the first half for you, would it be what missed opportunities? Uh, missed opportunities. Uh, we had more than enough opportunities and just to take advantage of it. Uh, we're playing a good football team, and we just can't leave those uh, opportunities out on the table like that. And at the same time, though, with Stevenson, I know that you were keeping the run in check for fits and starts. It was That was almost seemingly the, the tune as it was fits and starts for you out there. Yeah, we, you know, we, we knew it was going to be uh, much tougher and harder than we could practice it. Uh, so we're just trying to get a good fit for it. Uh, but we felt like we got that stop, and we just gave up a cheap one at the end. So we got to do a better job of finishing at the end of the half. All right, good luck in the second half. All right, thank you. Let's send it upstairs to Matt and Larry because they have some real official things like highlights and stuff, guys. Well, here's the cap to that opening drive, 88 yards, the eight-yard run by Patterson. And then Patterson got the two-point conversion, Larry. Yeah, it was just that was an impressive drive. As you mentioned, they ran all the way down the field. And then Creekside answers with a long drive of their own, Matt. Yeah, the fourth down pass play, 32 yards to Gibbs to make it 8-7. And then Ford himself goes up top to DJ Neal, one of three passes caught by Neal in that first half. They missed the two-point conversion the second time around, and it's 14-7. And look at the total yards. Couldn't get much more even than that. Yeah, that's really impressive, and it just show, again shows where, as you said, both had long drives. The difference was the forced fumble late in the second half by the by uh, Creekside was driving. Stevenson forced the fumble, takes the ball away. They were driving now for a touchdown. Otherwise, they are could be exactly right. even at 14-14 right now. You know, and not not really a forced fumble per se, as it was just a great strip yeah. by Khalil Ladler as Bryson Terry had gotten inside the 10-yard line to steal the ball away from him. Yeah, it was really impressive. I and mean, we were talking before again about just how the defensive adjustments, and you know what, we both love really good high school coaching. We've got two great coaches right here. I'm anxious to see here in the second half how these guys will respond to the instruction they got in the second half, because they, obviously they listened to the instruction uh, there in the first quarter. More of that to come. Yeah, we saw the adjustments on those second drives as the kick goes all the way through. Brought to you by GoBuildGeorgia.com. That's Moon on the return, and Joshua Moon brings it out to the 40-yard line, flagged down on the field. That kickoff brought to you by GoBuildGeorgia.com. Learn a skill, build a career, and do it now. Every Joshua minute. Moon with the big return. He had a big punt return in that first half as well, but it might be going in reverse with the penalty flag. It appears that it is. We've got a hold and going against Creekside. Tell you what, Moon's got some wheels. Once he gets up and moving, <laughs> look out. So instead of having the ball at the 41-yard line, Creekside going to start inside the 25, all the way back at the 23. There you see the quarterback, Felix Harper, 6 of 10 passing for 109 yards and a touchdown in that first half. It's like, uh, and back on offense, like, the Seminoles like go. Twinkie. Start it's this it's third quarter. Donut hole, but it's filled with cream. They have to. Arrowhead Stadium is quieted down a little bit after a fantastic show by the two marching bands. Harper punt fake. They got the man wide open, and it is dropped by Tyshawn Carter. Might have scored a touchdown if he could have hold on to it. I love that play call with the first play from scrimmage coming out of halftime. One more look at this. He does the, the, the double fake here. Again, this is a team they've done very well with the run. Now watch this. Looks quickly outside and then downfield. And boy, just a little bit lower on that pass. And you're right, he's off to the races, maybe all the way for six. Lil Ladler, the corner, really bit on the fake. Carter would have been in the end zone. <laughs> but instead, it's second down and 10. But I like the play call. I like that they're looking to go out and again take advantage. They didn't look downfield very much. A lot to the flat. It was a smart play. Bryson Terry runs right into the teeth of that defense. Not much running room. Christian Johnson in on that tackle, as was Chauncey Rivers. Bryson Terry, 13 carries for 57 yards and a 21 run yard reception in that first half. So 78 yards of total offense for Terry in the first 24 minutes. Perkinson with the catch. 
Perkinson up close to the first down marker. Don't think he got there, though. Fourth catch of the ball game for Perkinson. Abram scales the middle linebacker making the tackle, and it's going to be third down and makes that, pardon me, fourth down and one. And third down play. You know, we have not seen Julian Gibbs, the senior, since he went down with that injury there after making that touchdown and to, to make it an 8-6 game at the time before the extra point. I'm not sure uh, what his status is right now in this game. Nice kick by Moon. Ladler has it hit in front of him, takes it on the hop. And Ladler going to go down back at the 20-yard line. Yeah, just talking about Gibbs for a moment, the Creekside number 21 player. Wearing number 21, the senior, he scored. He a, came out of the backfield in that fourth down play, ran it, ran it behind the defense, scored the touchdown on the pass play. And then after the extra point conversion, he was limping off the field, was being treated on the, on the sidelines, and we have not seen him in the game since then. Yeah, looking for him down there, I don't see him right now. Both these teams have had their share of injuries here early in the season. Both teams fairly healthy right now. There's still some players out on both sides. Wow. No running room for Tillman. Ran right into a Kwanya Gates, number 30. Now watch Gates right here, the senior, number 30. is the guy you're looking for. Nice job. Great job also. My number Phil 63, Potts. Uh, yeah, Phil Potts, 17. Johnson, 63, was there to make him, force him to, to turn into reverse field. And then again, too many maroon shirts around him. Gates, a 6'2", 220-pound senior, came into the ball game with 30 tackles in their first four games. Tillman, inside reverse. Looked like Desert Cook. Nope, it was uh, Cortez Logan, number 28, on the carry for Stevenson. And now it's going to be third down and long. You know, both coaches now, you can see coming out of the locker room, trying a, a little bit of a different twist. We saw Creekside with the fake to the flat and then the throw downfield right there, the little double handoff. Misdirection, trying to change things up a little bit. That's old school wing T right there That's with right. the inside handoff. Third down and nine. Speed sweep goes to Zuber. Zuber will get to the 30. A flag of the play. Good pursuit there. Number 16, Demetrius Malone. Sedante Fuller, all part of that mix. And a holding call on Stevenson. Likely declined here since they're well short of the first down. When we look here, when you take a chance anytime you get, that's why it's so tough to run these sweeps. And there it is right there, Neal uh, with the hold. Trying to free up his man. When you run those sweeps and you get those guys out there, you try to pin the defensive back, it's just, it's a tough call. And he's not the first one to get caught. But he stays on the field, as we mentioned. Star receiver, does all the kicking, all the punting. And he'll be punting from his 14-yard line. Joshua Moon deep for the Seminoles. Line drive kick. Moon will take it from the 36. Chance for a big return here. Moon's got blockers. And Moon finally caught at the 25-yard line. Well, that's a great return, and I, I got to tell you, you know, part of the issue on the return game and why Moon is getting uh, such uh, great yardage in these returns is watch this on the replay. Now, again, this is a line drive coming right at him. There's no hang time on this. So the, the Stevenson special team, the Stevenson uh, kicking team, doesn't have enough time to get downfield. And so one more look at it again, as you can see here, uh, he's got all kinds of room. There's no one right in his face. He's got five yards open green in front of him, a good chance to get his blockers in place and the big game. And once again, it's Creekside starting inside the 30-yard line of Stevenson. Got to figure that Stevenson's going to have to figure out that kicking game if they're going to go far in the playoffs. Bryson Terry on the carry. Terry gets a couple of yards on the play. 
Player. Michael Mackins making the tackle. Player down. A little trash talking as well. It's Abram Scales, number 32. Scales there, leading tackler entering, entering the ball game with 28 tackles in three games. Six foot, 205 pound senior. Let's take one more look at this. There he is, number 32. Let's kind of see what happens here. Kind of holding his left arm. One more look again, 32. Terry coming up the middle. Another big hole there. One of those big offensive linemen for the Seminoles. Immediately favoring his left arm, and now he's walking off the field. It'll be interesting to see who they plug into the middle linebacker yeah. spot with Scales coming off the field. And he's the guy that makes all the calls and the adjustments. Um, he's a big part of that defense, and that's if he can't come back, that's a that's a tough loss for Stevenson here in the second half. Looks like Nigel Grant will take over and play the Mike position, move over from Sam. Harper slings it out here and complete. A little too much razzle-dazzle on that one, I think. Another shot here. Nigel Grant, number 39, as you mentioned, he's the one that moves over. And Devin Johnson moves in. He becomes the new linebacker as uh, Grant moves into the Mike spot. Third down and eight. Grant making the calls. Clark catch, spins out of a tackle and down close to the 15 yard line and close to a first down. Nice catch and grab by Clark. Yeah, Khalil Ladler had him. Boy, he was right there. A good defense uh, uh, by the junior quarterback for Stevenson. One more look at it, watching me here at number two. Reads this play well, but he can't wrap him up, and that allows for the big gain. And close to a first down, they're going to be about a yard short. The one more look at this Felix Harper. Wow, fourth and one, Larry, and they're going to bring out the kick unit. Try a 34 yard field goal here by Alejandra. And now they definitely will try a field goal <laughs> after they have a false start penalty and a five yard mark off field. It will turn it into a 39 yard kick. Well, you know, Coach Olton Downs uh, told us before the game, and, and he mentioned there in halftime, he said, you know, we've got to eliminate mistakes. That's just the one thing that, that we really have to try to take care of. You know, they returned a lot of inexperienced kids, so we graduated a lot of seniors off that state championship team. Still growing here uh, in week four. Yeah, this is a 40-yard kick from the left hash, and this kick's no good. So Alejandre has missed two field goals here tonight, and the score remains 14-7. to Once again, a good defensive show as we've seen so much of that since the opening drive for both of these two teams. Injuries on both sides, but they're finding a way to make it happen. And again, the good coaching adjustments on both sides to make uh, what was a very, very fast offense to start. It's now been a defensive slugfest. A nice job uh, by the Stevenson defense to turn them away and keep them off the board. Remember, we started the game, Larry, by talking about the Stevenson defense. They have held this uh, Tucker offense to seven points here. They averaged 42 and a half a year ago, averaging 36 points per game this season, but they've held them in check since that opening drive, and that's Ivante Patterson, or pardon me, Creekside. Tucker last week wearing the burgundy and gold. <laughs> Creekside. We didn't that see first down carry by Avante Patterson. Yeah, that was a big uh, run right there. We didn't see much of him uh, after that opening drive in, in the first half. And uh, we'll see if they can uh, get him unhinged, unhinged here in the second half. Patterson with eight carries for 30, make that 64 yards, eight carries for 64 yards in the first half. Four minutes into the third quarter. Patterson again, first down and more. Patterson across the 50. 
And Patterson finally out of bounds inside the 40 yard line caught by Demetrius Malone over there on the side, but another first down for Stevenson. Well, it all starts up front. Once again, he can't see it enough. Look at the huge hole he's got right there. No one touched him as he uh, broke through the front seven into the secondary. A great run there by Patterson to get the Jaguars uh, into Creekside territory. And once again, on the move. That was a 30-yard run by Patterson. That should put him over 100 yards for the game. Ten carries now for 104 for Patterson. Patterson averaging just under 77 yards per game. And well above that number here tonight. Stevenson threatening to go up two scores here. First and 10 from the Creekside 42. Nothing doing that time for Tillman. He's met in the backfield, lost some yardage on that play. Dedrick Dunbar making the tackle. Creekside getting in some of the reserve players here early in this third quarter. We'll try to keep guys a little fresh here for the fourth quarter. It's been a lot of plays, a lot of hitting. Both coaches expecting uh, a battle here to the end, and I think they'll be right. Second down and 10. Logan, nothing doing. Remember how Stevenson gashed Creekside in the of that defensive line early in this ball game, not near the amount of success this time around. No, not at all. And you've had those couple of big runs, and, and once again, they've kind of tightened up there, made the adjustment along the line. Third down and nine from the 41. Cranking up and going deep. And it's caught by Ladler inside the five yard line and down to the one. Khalil Ladler with just his sixth catch of the season. You know, I got to tell you, man, this young man Ford, the quarterback, number 13, watch him right here. You know, I know he doesn't pass the ball much. I've never seen a, a high school quarterback uh, that's so on the money, doesn't pass much when he is. On the money every time. Lather out behind his man. Throws in the perfect play, just like he did up in practice. It's first and goal. He's now seven for ten in this game for 117. Ladler plays primarily on defense. They slipping him there on the offense. We have an offsides call on Creekside. So now even closer to the goal. Inside the one, first and goal to go for Stevenson. And he did not get in. Second down and goal coming up for the Jaguars. DeWan Mann makes his way to the sideline to get the play call. You made a great point for a young man who's not been called on to pass the ball very much. Just 15 of 28 for the entire season in their first three games. A very solid 7 for 10 here tonight. <laughs> Second down and goal. And flags come out. The Creekside penalty, more mistakes. Of course, you can't get much closer to the goal line than what they are already. <laughs> They're already inside the one yard line, so they moved the football about three inches. I think so. <laughs> if that. <laughs> See the shadow of the ball from the lights? The shadow, actually, I think is already. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the shadow has nearly broken the plane. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> Third down. Pardon me, second down. and still didn't get in. Yeah, I thought that time he had it, and no, he did not. Third down. Okay. <laughs> My goodness, how close can you get without being in? <laughs> yeah, one more look at this. Look, his knee actually, does his knee go down early? And it does, it's right yeah. there. His knee is down. He slipped. Yeah, if he keeps, if he stays on his feet, it's a touchdown. 
He Back actually close. he lost two inches. Still no call from the officials. <laughs> the Creekside says they've held him out. And it's going to be fourth down. Well, that's a big defensive stand right there. Two penalties put you on the six inch line. Good camera work right here. Here's your goal line. Patterson, the good surge there. And look at that. Phil Potts, number 17. Fourth and goal. Uh-oh, man's in trouble. They stopped it at the goal line. A big defensive stand by the Creekside Seminoles. Stevenson has the ball with four cracks inside the one, and they can't get in. That's an impressive defensive stand. And boy, I tell you what, for this defense that has, has had its moments, really has come on strong, as we mentioned a few times again after that opening drive. What a huge, huge defensive stand for Creekside. One more look at it right here. Trying to get him out there, and that's number 30 was right there. Right place, right time, and Ganway, uh, Ganway uh, Gates. Big play by Conway, Conway Yates. I, I, see, I'm sorry, I missed you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Kwanye Gates. There you go. There you go with, his, with the big defensive play. What a huge goal line stand for the Creekside Seminoles. Now let's see if they can make something happen on offense. 99 yards away from their goal line. See how it gets, it gets the guys fired up here. A little life now all of a sudden. Tomahawk chop coming out there on the sideline by the Creekside Seminoles. Defensive team huddling up here on the side. So out of the end zone they run it. Bryson Terry gets it out across the 10 yard line. Gives the Seminoles a little breathing room. That's the kind of play that you just want to get a few yards uh, just to kind of get some space, but it almost gained a first down. So second down and one. Approaching the three minute mark of this third period. Terry again watching. Foot race and Gonzalez finally gets him across the 50 yard line. Touchdown saving tackle by Carlito Gonzalez, but a big run by Bryson Terry. Yeah, Bryson Terry, 5'9", senior, so integral in last year's uh, undefeated state championship season here for the Creekside Seminoles. Watch this again. You can see everyone pulling to the right side. That's some great blocking right there. And that just frees him up and he's off to the races. Like I said, Gonzalez finally catches up to him, but. Terry could do this all day long, and he was it just seemed like he was ready to break one out, and finally he did. 45-yard run by Bryson Terry. He's got all 52 yards so far on this drive. He's up close to 160 for the game. So we've got a stoppage, time stoppage here on the uh, field. I'm not sure when they get there. Some of the, uh, just the bystanders along the Creekside sideline were too close to field, so the official stopped playing to get him to move back behind that yellow safety line over there. John Nelson moved back, too. He was too close. No, John can go wherever he wants. <laughs> He's got the official GPB credentials. <laughs> Bryson Terry about four yards inside that 45-yard line. Now Bryson Terry really starting to get cranked up here. <laughs> You know, I think John just, you know, yeah, he can go wherever he wants. I mean, obviously, you know, but he just wouldn't get, he didn't want to get yelled at. That's the thing. <laughs> Second down and five. All 57 yards on this drive. Bryson Terry, and he gets it again. Bryson Terry running with authority. A first down for Bryson Terry at the 33. Like right, the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Terry, uh, do you have every yard on this drive? They start at the one-yard yeah. line? Yeah. Four carries for Terry. And a drive that started at their own one and now at the 33 of Stevenson. So 66 yards on the ground for Terry in this one drive alone. You know, football teams are close. The defense makes a huge stand like that. Four straight times from the one. It fires everybody up in the offense now, taking that momentum and driving it down the field. 
Terry again, his fifth consecutive carry. Terry down inside the 25. Well, I think the Creekside coaches have spotted something there along the right side of the line because they've gone almost every single carry has gone to the right. So there's something that they've seen that's working for them right now that they like, pulling guys out, doing some things, taking advantage of whatever they see over there. And even Rivers right now is on that side, the big defensive end uh, for the Jaguars. And there's a big reason why. Vinzel Bolwer, 6'4", 290. Fake it to Terry this time, and Harper sprints around the left end, and Khalil Ladler will not let him turn the corner. Comes up shaking his head at that Creekside <laughs> sideline, too. Well, you like the play call. You've gone right every time. You feel the defense, see if they're going to shift to the right, try to lean, get an advantage. Didn't quite work out the way they wanted, but still. Good Felix, defense, too. Felix Harper getting the play from the sideline, trots in. Bryson Terry now at 182 yards rushing in this game as we're into our final minute of the third quarter. Clock stop by the official. Trying to do a little uh, wardrobe malfunction there. Number 33. <laughs> Aaron Sterling, defensive end. His pad was uh, out of his jersey. It's back in, we're back in play. Terry, not this time. Drop for a loss back at the 27 yard line. So now Chauncey the, Rivers, I think, was among the first guys to get there. And then everybody else chimed in, including Aaron Sterling. Sorry about that, Matt. So now the question is, do you go for it? Fourth and four. Alejandro's already missed a couple of, a couple of field goals. Yeah, and you're talking about a 43-yard kick here. I think you got to go yeah. for it. Plus, you got the momentum. Yeah. They might let the clock run out here. Seven seconds left in the quarter. They snap it, toss to Terry. Terry did not get the first down, and Stevenson comes up with a big defensive stand of their own. On the final play of the third quarter, as Samuel Cambridge comes out of there with the ball in his hands, Stevenson, depending upon the spot, now let's hold on here before we go to break, because Let's see where they're going to spot it. The officials look like they've given them a pretty good spot at the 23-yard line. It initially looked like Stevenson had stopped them, but Larry, the spot looks favorable for Creekside. It certainly does. I, I'm, I'm with you, Matt. I thought you can see right there that he, the other official's kind of standing behind the ball, about a half yard behind him. I thought that was closer to where his progress was halted. But they've given what appears to be a very favorable spot right now for the Seminoles, and we'll see what we've got. So we got a very good look at it right there. Look at that. Yeah, that's, that's Phil with some great camera work down there. You know, that man takes his job seriously. Look at that. I love it. Right on the 23-yard line. They got it. A first down. Stevenson's initial jubilation is denied as the spot gives Tucker or rather Creekside, a first down on the final play of the third quarter. Nothing prepares you better for a great career than the Technical College System of Georgia. TCSG Colleges produce graduates with the knowledge and training today's top employers are looking for. With campuses across Georgia, state-of-the-art facilities, and outstanding instructors with real-world experience, it's the kind of affordable college education that will fast-track you into a rewarding career. We're building a better future for you. Contact the TCSG College in your area today or go to tcsg.edu. Some questions can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren, and I've got your back. Right now I'm about 100 feet high, traveling at about 50 miles an hour, just thinking about where I should go next. Do you have any ideas? Visit us on our Georgia Traveler Facebook page. Gotta go!
Creekside working on an 11 play drive here as we get ready to start the fourth quarter. Stevenson thought they had a big defensive stop on the final play of the third quarter, but they were denied. The spot went in favor of Creekside and they pick up the first down, Larry. Yeah, this is really an impressive run again. And the great effort right here, you can see they're trying to stop the surge. Uh, I thought they did, but, but again, the favorable stop, favorable spot. One more look at it, Terry, you can see here. Good momentum, great block to get Ladler out of the play there, number two, and then falling forward. Yeah. And the Bryson Terry drive will continue when we get back and start the fourth quarter. At the heart of our community are the businesses that don't skip a beat. Georgia's electric membership cooperatives stand behind local commerce. Whether keeping farms running or shining a light on new ventures, we bring business, large and small, to our communities. Creating jobs, driving development, supporting dreams. Georgia's EMCs, powering our businesses, lighting the way. This moment, getting here took three years of sleepless nights and postponed vacations. Your dad said, play it safe. Your husband kept the faith. But franchising is why you partnered with Regions in the first place. We share your vision for moving forward. And at moments like this, Hi, Steve. that makes all the difference. Is your business at a turning point? Regions. Some questions can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren and I've got your back. digital arms race. My computer, my iPad, I knew that I was being hacked. Who will win? In the past, it may have been weapons of mass destruction. The greatest threat today is the keyboard. This is not hackers in their basement. When it first came up, my mouth was like wide open, going, oh my god. Malicious programs being able to literally blow things up. Rise of the Hackers on Nova. On Why Wednesday at 9, only on GPB. Stevenson Jaguars lead 14 to 7 over the Creekside Seminoles heading into the fourth quarter here. Now I asked you a trivia question earlier in the night. I asked how many seasons Ron Gartrell, how many losing seasons Ron Gartrell has had in his career at Stevenson. The answer only one. His first season in 1996. And hey, everything takes some getting used to, right? So that's pretty incredible, Ron Gartrell. And before we send it back up to the booth, got to show you this is our trivia winner last week, uh, Cameron Stevens. That's his dog with the Football Fridays t shirt. That's him and his brother with their t shirt. So thank you, Cameron, for participating. Our winner for the night is Mike watching all the way from Charlotte. So he's going to be getting a Football Fridays in Georgia t shirt. And who, hey, who says you can't be watching our show all the way from North Carolina? So thank you, everybody, for participating. Let's send it back up to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Grace and John helping out there. Bryson Terry on the carry to start this fourth quarter as he slams his body in there and picks up about four yards to the 20-yard line. Looks like <laughs> when we his pants torn off. <laughs> yeah, wow. Get a wardrobe you talk about a wardrobe malfunction. Yeah. That's one way to get him off the field. Wow. Right. Pants just ripped right off his body. You're right. That's one way to get him off the field and probably the only way to get him off the field. And we were here. Justin Timberlake was nowhere near him. 
for the record. Terry with a big night, a big quarter, 87 yards rushing for him prior to that last carry. So 91 yards now for Terry in this second half. Harper up top, man, open touchdown. Miles Clark with the touchdown grab right in the middle of the field. Felix Harper down, took a shot and a half as he delivered the ball downfield for the touchdown strike. It is 14 to 13. When just like that, uh, boy, Harper stood right in there. We'll take a look at it here after the extra point kick, but that's one as again, he's being attended to as coach and the trainers. Quick play, I think everyone distracted by the fact that Knox wasn't in the game and all of a sudden, six points and a chance to tie this ball game up early in the fourth quarter. Alejandre on for the PAT. Miles Clark with his second touchdown grab of the year pulls the Creekside Seminoles within a point and Alejandre ties it up. 14-14 with 11 minutes to play. Now yeah, watch this right here again, the fake to the run, that does it right there. Finds his man out in the secondary. Somebody somewhere lost him uh, early on. Harper, we talked a lot about uh, Dewan Ford for Stevens and how efficient he is. Harper just the same. Already has a state championship ring. He won last year as a sophomore as the quarterback of the Seminole team and puts it right on the money right there. Great play, great play call for Creekside on your TCSG touchdown replay. John Nelson, what's going on down there? I feel like I'm taking my life into my own hands <laughs> and I'm probably going to end up washing them after I'm done. This is what's left of Bryson Terry's pants, by the way. Wow. They're, they're seriously looking for anyone with a small that is not currently playing. So this might be one of the toughest changes that you will ever see for a football player. And I had to wear the glove because, man, this is one wet piece of equipment. Yeah. I will guarantee you right now. <laughs> well, that was the Bryson Terry drive, John. He had 68 of their 98 yards on the ground. And remember, Larry, this drive started after the goal line stand by the Creekside defense. So instead of 20 to seven down or 22 to seven down, it's now 14-14. What a swing. Zuber has to go back and pick it up at the two. Didn't get into the end zone. And Zuber still on his feet. Uh oh -uh. The kicker to beat, he goes right by him, and Zuber finally caught from behind at the 27-yard line by Jared Stanley, I think, number 15. Yeah, Gerard him? Stanley caught him. Oh, what a huge return right there. Just to your point again on, uh, well, we'll take one more replay. Take a look at this now. Zuber, Kansas State commit. Nice move right here. Got some good blocking there. That's where kind of the ball again as it went down. The 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 the, return, the, uh, the kicking team actually kind of you know gets out of position when you yep. have a delay like that. Uh, your timing is off. They, the the wave wasn't there the way they needed it to be. And a big big return for Stevenson. They're in business now at the 32. First and 10 from the 32. Ibonte Patterson ball pinballs in there. Let's see who's on top of it. Creekside says they have it. And indeed, the Seminoles have it. Ivante Patterson had that ball pop loose as he crashed through the line. And it was big number 17, Trey Philpotts, the 6'3", 240-pound senior defensive end who came up with the loose ball. Yeah, we've called his number a few times here already tonight, Matt. One more look at this. Again, the strip inside. Patterson's been the workhorse, but right inside there, he it just didn't look like anybody stripped him. Looks like actually he just lost it when he ran up against one of his blockers. The ball kind of popped out there as he went through the line. Phil Potts on the recovery, and we talk about the defense of Creekside turning into offense, and they get the Seminoles back on the field first and 10. Let's see if Creekside tries to strike deep here, as teams so often like to do after a turnover. Instead, they hand off to Bryson. Terry, Terry still running hard. And the ball comes out again, and I think it popped into the hands of a Creekside lineman. And it did. <laughs> yeah, the big old bulwark that's, got it. That's right. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Markel Harrell. Yeah, the other big guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, one more look at this again, Terry. 
It's hard to bring him down. 5'9", 200, you see right there. 572. Ball's yep. going to fly up right into his hands. But that he might have already been down. It was Ladler again. Ladler stripped the ball before, just before halftime, and made the strip right there. But this time, Stevenson couldn't come up with it. Markel Harrell has been one of the big movers in the 24-7 Sports Composite National Rankings. In the overall national rankings, over the course of the last month, he has moved up from 677 to 337. So a uh, star on the rise on that offensive line, again committed to Auburn back in April. Harper slings it out here. Clark slips and falls down, gets back up on his feet, and is dropped by Nick Lundy, and the ball is out, and Lundy's running it back the other way. The officials are going to rule it down. Officials rule it down at the 43. Clark kind of uh, coming up a bit, a, bit, a little bit gimpy after that one. On the catch, ball slippery tonight. Due on the field. Great job just to, just to not to go down and lose, lose, lose yardage on that. Yeah, ball was out after he was on the ground. So at the 43, and they'll mark it a three-yard pickup. Wild turn of events here to start the fourth quarter here in Fairburn. Yeah, ball starting <laughs> to pinball around out there and become slippery. Second down and seven as they flip-flop the line. Look at that. They're going to line up the two big guys. Bulwar and Harrell side by side. <laughs> Look, the ball's going to the left, folks. That's right. <laughs> well, it's going to pass block. And he's going to be sacked. Big quarterback sack by Devin Johnson back at the 36-yard line. Well, that's a play right there that you didn't see him on your, on your camera screen, but that was Ladler with the great uh, defense in the secondary because this was a play that was all set up to go deep. That's where Harper's looking. It was meant to go uh, downfield, but again, Ladler was there with great coverage. That forced Harper to readjust, had to wait too long in the sack for the big loss, and now third and long for the Seminoles. First sack of the night for the Jaguars' defense. They're 13th as a team here in their first four games. Third down and long. Terry, stop, nice open field tackle by Makins at the 41 yard line, had a blocker on him and Michael Makins was able to shed the blocker, make the tackle and it's fourth down. And Makins, one of these guys that gets a lot of looks uh, as a part of this Jaguars defense. Give him a lot of credit here really to step this play out. Creekside likes to get Terry uh, out in space any way they can on the screen right there. Uh, but again, there's the block. They're trying to block for him, but can't make it. As you said, shakes off the would-be blocker, gets rid of him, makes the tackle, forces fourth down. Moon to punt. End over end. Ladler has it hit in front of him, bounce right to him, put his hands on it, and the ball is loose. It's going to be picked up by Creekside, still on the ground and covered, I think, finally inside the five. Well, it's an ill-advised play by the punt return guy. You just can't, you can't do that. I know he had the big return before, wanted to do it again, and uh, somebody's still on the ground right now from Stevenson, still hurt. Hezekiah Walker comes up with the loose ball inside the five. One more look at it here, and again, you see Ladler wanting to make a big play, lets it hop. We saw Zuber do this on the kick return a few moments ago, but again, when you do this, this is just disastrous. Big mistake that could really cost them now in a tie game as we head toward halfway through the fourth quarter. And then on the other side, Creekside, really, when you think about it, count the number of maroon jerseys you see there. What, six, seven? and none of them could pick it up. Finally, somebody had the smarts just to fall on the thing to get it and make sure you keep it for your offense and get a first and goal and a chance to punch it in. That was Ladler slow to get up after uh, falling on the football. Hopefully he's okay. That was just a mistake by Ladler. Should have run away from that ball as soon as it hit in front of him, and perhaps that's the, uh, the advice he's getting right now over there on the sideline. Now he had to keep his head up. He's too good of a player. Come back and make something happen on defense now. So first and goal to go. Hezekiah Walker coming up with the loose ball at the three yard line. Terry. Stop around the two yard line. So second down now under 
Seven minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Ball at the one. Second down and goal. Remember, end of the third quarter, it was Creekside who had a big goal line stand right down here on this end of the field. Terry stopped inside the one. Aaron Sterling with a great play, the sophomore lineman. Number 46, Drew Harris, also there. One more look at it here. Terry going right back. It's just great surge underneath. Aaron and Sterling, number 33. Player down for Creekside. And it's Terry. And so a timeout on the field. Terry down on the field. Tie ball game with 6.22 to play. Today, companies in the aerospace, advanced manufacturing, and film industries need skilled workers, and the earning potential is high. Go Build Georgia can show you where the jobs are and what skills you need to get them. And the Technical College System of Georgia has fast, affordable training for these great paying careers. Build your blueprint for success at GoBuildGeorgia.com and look to the Technical College System of Georgia to put your plan into action. Georgia cotton farmers want you to know cotton is grown in 91 Georgia counties on over 1 million acres. Cotton makes a $2.5 billion economic impact and accounts for over 15,000 jobs in Georgia. Cotton's innovative production has lowered water use per pound of cotton by 75% since 1980. One bale of cotton can make 215 pairs of denim jeans or 700 towels. Cotton is a natural choice for Georgia. Well, this does not look good, Larry, as Bryson Terry is being carried off the field, unable to put any weight on that right leg. Yeah. You hate to see that. You hope the best for that young man. What a ball game he was having here tonight. I think he's close to the 200-yard mark, I think, right? Let's take one more look at this again as he gets hit, his right knee. Oh, yeah. All right there. Hmm. I think that was uh, Devin Johnson, the linebacker, number 20, hit him right there, square on the right knee, and it collapsed in on him. Oh, my goodness. 101 yards rushing for Bryson Terry in this half, but now on the sideline. And remember that uh, Julian Gibbs, their other big running back, went out early in this ball game. Quarterback keeper Felix Harper and he's not in, or is he? There, they finally give the signal. And Felix Harper takes it in from one yard out, and Creekside has a 20 to 14 lead. Well, smart call here just to try to go on and knock this thing in after the timeout on your TCSG touchdown replay. One more look here, it's Felix Harper keeping it himself. The fight, the fight keeps the, you gotta keep the feet churning, keep it moving. Give him a look here from the side. And we saw this before from Ford tried this in one of those uh, four attempts for Stevenson. The problem was, remember, his knee fell. The knee went down, and uh, he was down behind the line of scrimmage and couldn't get it in. Alejandre puts it through. And with six minutes and ten seconds, Creekside leads for the first time tonight at 21-14. Big turn of events. We're again kind of watching on the side there, the Creekside sideline. You saw a shot there of uh, appeared to be the knee of Bryson Terry, the star running back, the senior. What a great high school career he's had here. Talking to the trainers, he is standing. That's uh, that's the best sign. Putting some weight on it. That's a great sign. We certainly hope the best for this young man. What a great talent he is, and a big part of this. Creekside team that's trying to repeat as state champions after winning their first title last December in the Georgia Dome. Remember, they've already lost their star wide receiver in Georgia commit Jason Stanley to a season ending knee injury as we check in with John Nelson. And you see what they're doing here with Terry. They're trying to see what kind of range of motion and mobility that he's got. And I think right now that what you're seeing is more adrenaline going than anything else where Terry's concerned. The physios were working both sides of his knee and he admitted that it was a shot to the outside of his right knee. So I don't know how much longer they're going to try to have him do these little shuttle runs and quick sprints. 
But you saw that first cut, and it looked like he was okay off of that first one, so who knows? Zuber tackle, no, gets away from Moon. Flag comes out, Zuber streaking down the sideline. Remember, there's already a flag on the field. Zuber's gonna take it all the way. I think it's gonna come back, though. Zuber goes the distance, but a flag on the field back at the 13-yard line. Yeah, probably coming back, but boy, that was really impressive to stay on his feet. He, he was avoided about three or four tackles there inside the 10-yard line. We're gonna sort this out right now. It does, it does appear that it's coming back, but we'll see what the call is. Yep, block in the back will negate the touchdown run. You know, we talked earlier about, again, that it's such a football, such a momentum game in the first quarter right away. Both teams went right down and scored quickly on their first offensive series. And then the defense sets down. If you check out the replay here, one more look at it. You can see the hole here coming up. Here's, here's, here's the one. It's a block in the back, actually. And there it is right there. You cannot do that. That's number 23 right there with the block in the back. And that was pretty obvious, an easy call for the referees. But when you talk about it again, the, 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 the momentum shift and what Creekside's been able to do here in the second half is, you know, the defense again creating offense. The big stop there in the goal line and four straight tries inside the one. 99-yard drive to score the touchdown and then forcing another fumble and coming back and scoring another touchdown here to actually take the lead for the first time in the game. Rick Murdoch, number 23, called for the block in the back. So instead of six, they're back at their six. Or maybe closer to the seven. Either way, they're a long way away. 93 yards away with 5.49 to play. And down a touchdown. Patterson. Still on his feet, runs into his own man, and Patterson gets 17 on the play up to the 30. Both of these offensive lines, and you take a look at this again, just the holes this young man has had to run through all the time. Uh, watch right over here on, the, on this side. We're gonna look at this uh, area right here along the right side of the line, and watch where uh, these guys go, pulling right here, and there it is, wide open. Uh, He's had those kinds of lines all night long here. Patterson taking advantage. He's had a huge night and trying to get Stevenson back on the board. Patterson now at 121 on the night. This time, no running room. Clock ticks under five and a half to play. Still plenty of time here for Stevenson, but also just looking ahead, decision time will come up if they score the touchdown. Are they going, they're you going gotta go for two? two? Yeah. Going for two in the win, right? <laughs> That's right. Well, again, they kicked only two extra points the entire season. They're two of five on their kicks. <laughs> well, you but can't. You gotta get in the end zone first. Yeah, yeah, you gotta do that first. And again, the, the, the kicks are line drive. So if you get any height, and you've got some good linemen that behind them some good height on the, uh, the creek side line, they'll just reach up and block it. They just need to treat, you know, teach somebody how to drop kick. That's right. <laughs> get up under the ball. Second down and 10. Ford back to pass. Going for the home run. And Neal, what a catch! No, ball is out. Well, that was right there. Nearly a spectacular catch by DJ Neal. Ford overthrows him just a little bit, but again, we've talked about he's yet to turn the ball over. No interceptions this year for Dewan Ford, and Neal had it right there, right through his hands. It's a very difficult catch to make. This young man so talented just couldn't quite come up with it. Third down and 10. Great camera work too. GPB staff, very talented people. Neal goes to the sideline. Zuber checks in. A lot of time in the huddle here. Yep, took too much time. Delay of game penalty here on Stevenson. Now they're third and 10, has become a third and 15. This is tough now, and you're right. Well, you've got to make up here in a moment. If you're, if you're fourth and 
short do you go for it at this point? I mean, I probably have to kick it. Still a lot of time on the clock. You yeah, have all three timeouts. And you do have all three timeouts yeah. left for your defense to stop the clock. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't go for it here because, no. I mean, you give the ball to yeah. Creekside on your side of the 50. Third down and 15 here. Handoff Ladler. Ladler hops over, man. Ball is out. It's recovered in the air in midair by Sedante Fuller. And Creekside's got it. Ladler trying to make a play. Hurdles a man. Gets hit as he does. Ball pops into the hands of Sedante Fuller. And Creekside has it. That's the second turnover in this quarter by Ladler again. The fumble on the punt return and here. Just a great athletic move here to hurdle the guy, but he comes out on his own right into the hands of Fuller. Right place, right time, trying to make something happen. Getting credit for the effort on this. Such a great, talented athlete for the Stevenson High School team. And that ball has been slippery. We've That's got to be probably the sixth or seventh fumble that we've had here in the game in this one before it causes a turnover. Results in a turnover. So now... Creekside takes over at the 42. Last three Stevenson drives have ended with a turnover. And now the Jaguars defense is called on to make a stop here and get the ball back. And look at that, Bryson Terry back in the game and a flag out at the end of the play. The reaction looks like it's gonna go against Stevenson. Yeah, well. Markel Harrell was laying on top of the linebacker, De Devon Johnson, or Devin Johnson, back at the 43-yard line. And holding is the goal. Side, okay. The Stevenson player, the way he reacted, <laughs> he thought the call was against them. Well, how about Bryson Terry back in the game? Yeah. I mean, that? Bryson Terry was helped off the field like he was done for the season. Well, you think about it, what a night he's had. I mean, here's the shot here where he lost Woo! his pants because his pants ripped off him, literally. Look at this. <laughs> he was out one play. Somebody else got him a pair of pants. John's got a souvenir. He'll tell his kids one day about that. <laughs> he's going to put that up in the <laughs> hang on his basement wall. <laughs> in his memorabilia room. <laughs> and he's back in the game. So after the penalty, first and 15 now, and Bryson Terry gets the rock again, shoots through the line, takes a shot at the end of the play, but he's down to the 29, and a first down carry by Bryson Terry with Carlito Gonzalez making the hit at the end of the play. We'll look at this again, at the good line, but that's just a small seam. And when you're a great running back with great vision like that, 5'9 senior, Bryson Terry, that's all he really needs. A little shot to the helmet there afterwards that uh, wasn't called, and watch this. We've seen that call before, but it wasn't here. But Terry, I'm, I'm with you. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a guy carried off where you're not putting any pressure on either leg, and yet the very next series you're back, you're back in, the, in game. the game. Yeah. And Good running fun. as hard as ever. <laughs> That's right. No ill effects. And there might be a delay of game here on Creekside. It is. That's the tough thing about Georgia high school football. You don't have the play clock here at these uh, local stadiums. So you really are reliant on the sideline to keep the time for you. And oftentimes you'll see the kids, especially late in the ball game, as teams milk the clock, they'll look over to the sideline waiting for the coaches to tell them when to snap it, running it all the way down. But it can be a guessing game at times. Also, this big one, they need to hurry up again, I think. It took a little bit of time here. Terry, another big one. Bryson, Terry, Khalil Ladler back in the ball game after that fumble. Tackles him at the 20, but that is a close to nine yard pickup for Bryson Terry. Terry now with 189 yards on 27 carries. Yeah, let's look at it one more time here. And I was just gonna, funny, before this, talk about that I think this Creeks on offensive line really begin to impose its will here late. They've been on they've been on the field for a lot. The Stevenson defense in the fourth quarter has really spent a lot of time on the field, beginning to wear down a little bit, maybe get a little bit tired. And again, that big beef, those future Division I football players there up front are uh, really beginning to impose their will and make a big difference here in the fourth quarter. Second down and one. Terry. 
First down, Moore inside the 10. Terry inside the five, finally grabbed by Khalil Ladler and Sean Jolly. And it's first and goal to go for Creekside. Yeah, right now, again, it's, it's Creekside doing almost really what they want. And both teams have enjoyed that on offense uh, at different times. But it's Bryce and Terry again. As you mentioned before, I mean, he may make 1,000 yards here in his next game for the season. What a year he's having. It's his second 200-yard game of the season. He's gone for 202 tonight, went for 204 in their opener against South Cobb. He's now at 732 yards in their first five games of the season. I'm just happy he's healthy after, after that play. He can, he can take the rest of the night off if he wants to in my book. I'm just happy that he's healthy. Gets it again. Gets into the end zone for the touchdown. First touchdown run of the night for Bryson Terry. His eighth of the season, and Creekside may have just applied the knockout punch to Stevenson with two minutes to play. Yeah, the way their defense is playing right now, it's uh, going to be very tough if they just hold on to the ball. Uh, if Creekside you know, gets it back, they hold on to the ball. Stevenson is going to have to score very quickly here when they get the ball back. But how about this Creekside defense and what they've done? They've pitched a shutout here in the first 22 minutes of the second half. It was 14-7 at the half. It's been all Creekside here since then. Alejandre with the PAT, and it's 28-14. to And when we think back on this game, we'll remember that goal line stand by Creekside that turned the game in the Seminoles' favor as Terry takes it in. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is made possible in part by Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, lighting the way. Technical College System of Georgia, learn more, earn more. Cigna, go you. And viewers like you, thank you. As a strong, stable bank, Regions is always looking for opportunities to boost the vitality of our communities. In addition to offering financial solutions for our customers, we are committed to supporting local initiatives and organizations that help our neighborhoods thrive. Regions is proud to be a partner with GPB in building a better Georgia. What is by moonlight an empty field is by the magic of electricity, sacred ground. As the official energy provider of the GHSA, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives proudly support our student athletes. We are there, illuminating the glory moments fans just have to see. Capturing the hustle, elevating champions, sharing the win. Georgia's EMCs, empowering our youth, lighting the way. Side has opened up a 28 to 14 lead on Stevenson now with two minutes to play. Bryson Terry, the hero of the night, 151 yards on the ground for Terry, over 200 for the game. That 151 coming in the second half, he caps a five play 42 yard drive. And Larry Smith, 21 points scored by Creekside since that goal line stand when Stevenson had a chance to go up by two scores. As we said then, you know, teams are very close and they just, you, sometimes you just need just a spark. It was back and forth, both defenses holding, but that defensive play, that was an impressive, as you said, first and goal at the one, four straight shots at it, they couldn't get in, and at that momentum, it's been all Creekside ever since. Very impressive team effort by the Seminoles. Three fourth quarter touchdowns. by Neal up close to the 
35 yard line, but Stevenson with a lot of work to do and not a lot of time to do it. Down two scores, three timeouts remaining and 153 on the clock. It was impressive there by Alejandre, the Creamside kicker, to kick it a bit short to one of the up men. Neil, the receiver, caught it. He's got good wheels, but again, the defense, it doesn't allow the, you to get your, 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 your wedge into motion your, uh, on, your, on your return team and all your blocking into place when you kick it short like that. So they gain, they gain a few yards, but at the same time, you, don't get the, you eliminate the big return. Let's see what Dewan Ford can do. Seven of 11 passing for 117 tonight. No doubt called upon to fling the ball here. Heavy rush, steps up, gets away from it. Logan on the little dump pass, and Logan dragged down by Joshua Moon. Clock will keep going. Creekside now a little more than 90 seconds away from improving to 4-1 and one on the season and dropping Stevenson to 2-2. Two and two. Ford, flag is out. That's a first down toss, but we'll check the flag. Stopping the clock, 118 to play. Remember, these two teams might yet play again because in Region 6, they play a nine game regular season schedule. And the 10th game of the season is the, is the play-in game for the state playoffs. If you win your division, the two division winners will play for the region championship. One will be the number one seed, obviously, and the loser the number two seed. And then the second and third place teams in each of the Region 6 5A divisions will play for the final two spots in the playoffs. That's the final week of the regular season. Both these teams will be off next Friday. Creekside starts their division schedule on October 3rd against Mays. Then you close it out against Carver, Atlanta, Tri-Cities, Banneker, and then the play-in game will come the week after. And Stevenson, they also will be off. They'll start their division schedule against Miller Grove with Dunwoody, Druid Hills, ML King, Southwest DeKalb still to come. Going to wave off the flag. Did stop the clock, however, which is a break for Stevenson. And they'll move the chains. And once they get them set, clock starts rolling again. Clock moving again, ball at the 47, first and 10. Four throws complete to the sprint man. That was the guy that went in motion, Eric Elder. First catch of the season for Elder, still on his feet. And Elder does a great job of getting out of bounds. Well, that's a great effort, wow. <laughs> he was tackled, he's been tackled about three times on that. Stayed with it. Ron Gartrell told us guys like Eric Elder, Alex Sands, guys that are don't have any catches on the year, but really good wide receivers. They just don't have enough footballs to go around. Elder getting his first catch right there and doing something with it. So Stevenson still alive. They move the sticks. 59 seconds to play as Elder gets out of bounds at the 38. He'll stay on the field. Neil Taylor and Zuber, the wideouts, and that's Neil who goes in motion. Ford going downfield, long pass, looking for Taylor. Taylor was the intended target. He had Zuber running free down the sideline, I believe, and didn't see him. Tried to get the ball to Tyler Taylor. But if you're watching Tyler Taylor, Taylor here, number nine, watch for number seven, Zuber, streaking down the sideline. If he's in the shot. Yeah, see him yeah, downfield right by himself. Yeah, yeah. Second down and 10. Ball to 38, down to 53 seconds. Heavy rush. Ford scrambling, gets rid of it. Flag out, might have a holding call here. Yeah, it's in the place where holding usually is. Trey Philpott's got him on the ground, but he yeah. got rid of the ball, but I believe we're going to have a holding call. Got a takedown by one of the big offensive linemen trying to protect his quarterback. Stevenson going 10 yards in the wrong direction, you know, but you got to think about the struggle they've had with the kicking game without a true kicker on the roster. Stevenson, if they have to kick an onside kick with the seconds on the clock, how that might look. 
Watch this love tackle here is the one that it holds. Just a takedown right there in the 67. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the WWE move. <laughs> now, <laughs> word is, word is that Stevenson is grooming a female kicker. Kicked for the JV team last night. I wish I had her name, but she kicked for the JV team last night and made one, had two blocked. They might move her up to the varsity and give her a shot. That's a completion out on the far side. Not near enough, however. Zeta Jury is the name of the kicker. And she kicked in the JV game last night. They might eventually give her a shot. Greg Johnson was the one who made the grab right there. That's his first catch of the season. And the clock is stopped with 34 seconds. Timeout has been called by Stevenson. And let's check in with John Nelson. Yeah, she's pretty busy on the Stevenson campus when you're talking about Zeta. Girl soccer track and field and then kick for the JV. So she's going to have a big CV by the time she's done and she could continue. Now last year at Villarica we had Taylor Tideback who was their kicker who could kick from 45 in. We don't know Zeta's range. It'll be interesting to see. You got Tanya Butler. So the pedigree is there and the history is there for all of the female kickers that we've had here in the state of Georgia. Now, Taylor was a good kicker. Well, I know Ron Gartrell right now just wants somebody male or female, to be able to put it through the uprights. <laughs> exactly. And they've usually had a great legacy. As we mentioned, they've, they've uh, matriculated five scholarship kickers yeah. in Stevenson history. So that's usually not been a problem for the Jaguars, but it is a big one for them this year. Not, not the case here tonight. Uh, it's, it's kicking game or lack thereof is not going to cost them here tonight. But they will drop their second game of the season, barring some kind of miraculous comeback here with 34 seconds remaining. Ford cranks it up and lets it go. Incomplete, looking for Zuber. And it's going to be fourth down. You mentioned Zuber, a Kansas State commit. Second week in a row we've seen here on the Football Friday in Georgia GPB game, a Kansas State commit. So two of the three commits the Wildcats have in the state of Georgia have been right here on GPB the last two Friday nights. The other, Duke Shelley from Tucker and Zuber and Shelley are great friends. Uh, Zuber committed back in June and then Shelley went on a visit with him the same time and then Shelley committed back in August. Fourth down could be the final play of the night here on offense for Stevens. Ford lets it fly. And nearly intercepted and the ball's gonna go over on downs. And Creekside defending state 5A champions are about to be four and one going into their bye week. We talked to uh, Coach Gartrell, as we talked to him before the game, and, and he said very simply, we can't turn the ball over. That was what they did against Miami Central. Fumbled, we're down. And then here, the second half turnovers. Two big, big turnovers that ended up turning into touchdowns for the Creekside Seminoles, and that was the big difference here in the second half. Yeah. Creekside don't, defense was big. Yeah. Don't count out Stevenson just yet. Their only losses to national power Miami Central and here to defending Georgia State champion, Creekside. Yeah, if you've got to have L's in your resume, uh, those quality are okay. losses, as they like to say in the, <laughs> on the RPI NCAA basketball March Madness. Uh, they got quality losses. That's right. That's right. Now, two great programs, as we said in the outset, and boy, what a game tonight by these two. That's going to do it. First ever meeting between Creekside and Stevenson goes in the books for the Seminoles. 28-14 the final. Big night for Bryson Terry as he goes over 200 yards rushing for the second time this season. A new career high, 209 on the ground, 208 on 29 carries for Bryson Terry. And a Lazarus-like comeback after it looked like he was done for the season. He's getting hugs, and <laughs> rightfully so. He put on a show here tonight with 208 on the ground. And to once again rally Creekside from behind 
three of their four losses, or three of their four wins, pardon me, have come after they have come from behind. In the opener, down 10 against South Cobb. Down 12 against Carver Columbus. And never leading tonight until six minutes left in the game against Stevenson. And they pull it out 28-14. Markel Harrell taking his helmet off and celebrating a big victory. Well, I think we look at this Creekside team. Okay, this is, you know, we talk about again for Stevenson, two quality losses. This is a quality win for Creekside. Stevenson, as we mentioned, at the top, one of the great programs in the state of Georgia, one of the top programs in the southeast. And this is a Creekside team, that program that under Olton Downs is just beginning to kind of come into its own and what they're doing right now. And the kids they had last year and the success they had and the heartbreak and what they've how they've come back from that and what they've done here tonight. They show that they, uh, despite some inexperience and some guys that they graduated and they certainly missed this year, uh, they feel like they've uh, got the tools to make another run of a state championship. And how about Olton Downs? He has now won 19 <laughs> of his 20 games <laughs> as Creekside's head coach and his only loss, a one-point loss. Yeah. <laughs> John Nelson impressive. is standing by with Coach Downs. John, take it away. Thank you very much, Matt. Everything turned on that goal line stand. Uh, we needed some momentum, and uh, that was uh, one heck of a stop by our defense, and uh, it gave them the momentum that we need. Uh, up to that point, we were squandering some opportunities, and it really got us going uh, to just play fast and physical the way we want to play here. Offensively, 44, he had a busy night. You kept handing him the ball, had to change his drawers, then he gets injured. Then he comes back. I mean, it was a big night for Bryson. Uh, well, you know, we pride ourselves being able to run the football, and uh, he wants to be that working horse back. He worked hard in the weight room all summer long for it. And uh, we got a big old line, so we want to feed him that rock, you know. So we want to just keep pounding guys, and we want to make the other team quit. What kind of a win is this for y'all? Uh, it's a big win. Uh, we know we could do it. And those guys are very, very extremely talented, and uh, we knew the game was going to come down to uh, who made the fewest mistakes and uh, winning the kicking game. And uh, we had some. We had two missed field goals, and we was worried about and. Uh, they were very dangerous in the kickoff return, you know. Um, but we was able to pull it out and continue to fight hard. All right. You know you still only lost once in your entire career here. That's a great thing. We want to keep it that way. All right. Congratulations and go celebrate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alton Downs, winner tonight. He's going to go celebrate. Mark, the postgame show starts right now. Right now. Thank you very much, John Nelson. Great game tonight as the pending 5A state champion Seminoles of Creekside rally with 21 points in the fourth quarter. They had a great goal line stand at the end of the third quarter to pull off this win 28-14 over third-ranked Stevenson. Let's take a look at the early highlights. Early on, first drive of the game, it was Stevenson's Ivante Patterson going eight yards for the touchdown, capping an 88-yard drive making it eight to nothing. Then Felix Harper, 32 yards to Julian Gibbs. That cut the lead to eight to seven. Second quarter now, it's Stevenson, Dewan four to DJ Neal, it's 14 to seven. It would be 14 to seven at the half. It would be 14 to seven at the end of the third quarter. Here, Felix Harper hooks up with Miles Clark to make it 14-14 in the fourth. Felix Harper then scores on a quarterback sneak to make it 21-14. Bryson Terry added another, and Creekside wins this football game by two touchdowns, scoring three TDs in the fourth quarter to win this one. 28 to 14. Let's send it back over to John Nelson, and I'm guessing who he's got to star of the game. John? Yeah, yeah, that's about right. I know that was a real tough guess. How you feeling, Bryson? Man, we won. That's all I really. Feel. That's all I really feel. I feel the joy of the win, and I'm glad my team held me while I was down for a minute. But everything is everything is good right now. We got the win. With those big guys on the right hand side, it seemed like second half, especially after that goal line stand, they just wanted to go power right with you and you found the holes and everything seemed to go off right guard, right tackle for big gains that you were gashing. Yeah, that's it. When we went in, we made adjustments ASAP. And all he said was if we hit him in the mouth, then everything would just open up, everything would go good. So he called it, started calling power right, power right, power right. I think we did like five plays. And I just kept on finding different lanes to hit. And all I, I knew we had to score ASAP. So as soon as I got the ball, I just found the hole and went straight through. Now, when you lost your drawers, when they came off, I actually made the mistake of handling them and showing them how, showing everybody just how nasty they were when they got disintegrated. Do you know whose pants you're wearing right now? Uh, I'm wearing one of my, uh, one of the freshman pants right now. They, uh, I ain't want them to take the pants off, but hey, I, had, I needed some more pants to uh, go back in the game. 
So <laughs> worst case scenario, it's always the freshmen that lose their pants to the seniors and the juniors if the pants go, right? Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. Now I asked the coach this question. I'm going to ask this one to you too. How big a win is this for y'all, considering that it was back and forth, you were down, then the goal line stand, then you hit him in the mouth, and you kept him shut out in the second half? This is, it's a big game. It's a big win for us. It, at first, it was a big game. We knew it was going to have a nice crowd. And at, from the beginning of the game, my coach had said, go out and do what you're supposed to do. And when we went out here and did that, that's all we had to do to, um, to come out and get a victory. So we preached all week about how big this game was going to be, and it's our second reason game. So now we just keep on trying to push forward. we got a bye week next week, and we're preparing for Mays. He's got a bye week to get your, get your pants repaired and get back and give the freshman back his pair, right? Yes, sir. I, th I, think, I think one of our managers have a, a sewing machine, or if not, I can just take him to my grandmother. <laughs> okay, you do that. you got a bye week. Congratulations, yes, Bryson. Thanks Thank for hanging you. out with us. All right. Thank you. Mark. That's enough talk about laundry. We'll send it back to you. <laughs> well, Bryson Terry loses his pants, wins the game, rushes for over 200 yards, scores a touchdown. Facebook, Twitter, the Internet, it's all blowing up. Let's go to our social media correspondent, Grace Olson, for one final look at what they're chatting about online. Grace? Speaking of that, Mark, before I get to talk about, talking about Creekside and Stevenson social media for the night, Nelly, I have to let you know I've been monitoring that social media and that Twitter machine. Uh, if you don't know already, John went to Lakeside. I went to Dunwoody High School, and Dunwoody beat Lakeside tonight 21-17. to So there we go. That is a victory for Dunwoody. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not surprised. That was me screaming just a second ago when she read the final score. That's not a surprise, though. All right, so the Wildcats beat them out. There we go. Our little competition between us two. Now back to Creekside and Stevenson. We told you earlier that we went to their afternoon pep rally. I haven't seen a pep rally or excitement like that since I've been in high school. Here's the video we uploaded online, almost three minutes long. We told you earlier about the uh, awareness raising going on about childhood cancer and finding a cure, raising funds to support the cause. And these are our teachers, administrators, the principal of the school getting pied in the face today. It's kind of like the ice bucket challenge, but for the uh, childhood cancer and finding a cure, finding uh, supporting the cause. So make sure to go to uh, GV Sports on Facebook, like us. You can see that full video because, man, was it an exciting night. And this game was an amazing game, and we've got it all recorded on photo with videos. We were providing you updates all game long on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And all that is on the web and there to stay, so go find it. And if you haven't already, download the GPB football app because it is your Bible for the rest of the football season. And we know these games tonight are changing those rankings, uh, changing the schedules. You know what? So make sure to download the GPB football app to your iPhone or your iPad from the App Store. And if you don't have an iPhone or an iPad and you have an Android, you can check the same stuff. It's available online at gpb.org slash sports. So make sure to check it out soon. Back over to you, Mark. All right, Grace, thanks very much. And remember, if these bands were outstanding, go to our Facebook page and you'll see more action from both bands on our Facebook page. Well, that's it for our game tonight, Creekside and Stevenson. Next week, another big game. We head to historic North Cut Stadium where the Hillgrove Hawks will take on the Blue Devils of Marietta. The all-access pass begins at 7 p.m. with the game kicking off at 7.30 with Matt and Larry with the call. So all of us here at GPB Sports, thank you for joining us tonight on our Football Fridays in Georgia Sportscast. We've got you covered all the way to the seven championship games at the Georgia Dome in December. So until next time at North Cut Stadium, thanks for joining us tonight. Enjoy your week and so long, everybody.